Hello and welcome to the Morphomania podcast. Uh, I'm going to start out with saying like we had a previous episode recorded, but I screwed up and deleted it. So we're redoing this, which is even better. <laughs> uh, on yeah. Purpose. <laughs> no, not on purpose. <laughs> Shut up. We know what you did. With, not, with 90% less Columbine jokes. Yes, 90% <laughs> less Columbine jokes. <laughs> God damn it. So, uh, this is episode um, 11 to 16. If you're all wondering where episode 1 to 10 are, they were under a different name of the podcast. So, we decided to name this podcast the Morphomania Podcast because it makes more sense because it's Power Ranger related. I am Humanoid, and this is my crew here, the Doif and Dead Shrew. Say hello. What is that? It's me, Mighty Morphin Mori Povich. Jesus Christ, we're already starting with a bang. <laughs> to be honest, I kind of want to see that. And yeah. Humanoid is not the father. I am happy about that. I can do the dance. <laughs> you can do the dance. There's multiple. Anyway. To be honest, I kind of want to see Yeah, that. there's a lot of those. Yeah. God, I, I'm... No, not to preempt, not to rant about something, but like I've gone on record as saying that some of those like thirty, well, an hour thirty minute, you are not the father compilations are some of the dumbest shit on YouTube. Yeah, they are. But the, it's just hilarious when they're not the father, and the mom just keeps on saying like, "I swear on my mother, he is the father. He is not the father." He starts dancing. Yell him now, and she runs to the backstage. You bring out the olives. Ah! Ah! Oh my god, what a he was such an ass for that one. Bring out the olives. Yeah. <laughs> Maury is such a tra peak trash television. Anyway, Jerry Springer um, was peak trash. Uh, Springer was okay. I watched more Maury because it was. I don't know actually why I watch more Maury. Uh, I don't know, but anyway, you know let's... we should be watching Power Rangers. Yes, I was about to say <laughs> yeah, that. Good point. So the first episode we're re we're recapping is No Clouding Around, episode eleven. Good old Season one, episode eleven. Uh, air date was September seventeenth, nineteen ninety three. Um, it was written by Mark Hoffmeyer and directed by Adrian Carr for the production information. So the episode starts out in uh, the Angel Grove Carnival. Oh, wait, we got to talk about the opening theme real quick. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank yeah. you. So the opening theme, uh, I, as people may know from the last episode, I'm a Sentai nerd. Mm -hmm. uh, so I wanted to do this fun little thing where I can quickly uh, compare the theme songs of the Sentai versus the Power Rangers. Uh, and it's mm -hmm. absolutely uh, so no I question to... here, and I know that I'm going to be pissing some people off. Mighty Morphin is just outright the better song compared to Jew Ranger. <laughs> I really thought that warning uh, was for us, but I I'm like, you were... okay. I thought you were going to say yeah. Jew Ranger uh, was a better theme. Yeah, no, that that's just what it is. Uh, it's Look, I know Jew Ranger is iconic for Japanese fans, and it's a great song, and you just get that Jew Ranger. <laughs> It's a great song. I'll get into the whole song if I start singing more. Be a copyright. Uh, it's a great song, but uh, you know, uh, Mighty Morphin's just better. It's got, it's got electric guitar, which is something that Zhu Ranger does not have, and it's that nice is rock guitar. Yeah, you're, you're one of these keys. Earworms can really get stuck in my head. The fact that Zhu Ranger only got stuck in for, let's say, six months, and Power Rangers has never left since I first listened to it, I think look, really goes to show its stability as a great song. Yeah, look, all I'm saying is if the angry video game nerd can make a banger ass parody of it, uh, oh, yeah. it's a great song. <laughs> Tiger Electronic Wristwatch Nerd. You know, <laughs> it's considering just slow oh. and over. Sorry, considering all the Power Rangers seasons, that's great banger theme songs, except for RPM, which was kind of bad. No, it was really bad, but it had the best season ever. Yeah, it was like the best season, but the theme, we'll get to it. Anyway, yeah. back to the yeah. episode. Mm-hmm. 
So, uh, yeah, d- directed by uh, Adrian Carr and written by uh, Mark Hoffmeyer. I, I, I just thought I'd throw that in, just, 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 just give some production credits. Yes, yeah, they need love, too. We're doing our oh, yeah. research now. <laughs> yeah, we, we're big brains now. So, yeah, of course, it's, uh, the episode starts off at uh, the, uh, the, the Angel Grove Carnival, and uh, we get a shot of, uh, I, I want to say, d- it's either it opens with just a shot of the five just, like, hanging around or just in the carnival, and then we get that magnificent shot of w- w- basically the, uh, I can't remember how you put it, but it's basically the most iconic image of Balkan skull bake, basically, uh, with the con Andy. Oh yeah. And, and Zach has a bit of fun shenanigans with stilts before that. Right. Right. I, I don't, I, I don't screw with stilts. Yeah. Even when I was yeah. younger, I didn't screw with stilts. No, like, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going there. <laughs> also you introduced to, uh, the clown before Balkan skull show up. It's, uh, Oh, uh, Pickle Rick. No, not Pickle Rick. What am I saying? Pineapple the Clown. Pineapple the Clown. Pickle Jesus. Rick. What the fuck? We all, yeah, we also get the fun realization that every clown in this in this carnival is just a putty. Yeah, in makeup. And it's terrifying. Yes, especially as clowns. <sighs> yeah, like I, this is just color phobia of the episode. And like if Ric Flair was at the carnival, he'd just be like... <laughs> Oh, no, it's like, no! It's like that one episode of The Haunting Hour where it's like clowns are like an alien race. Wait a minute, that's just killer clowns from yeah, outer space. that's killer clowns well, from outer space. Well, n- n- not exactly that. It's more like they're like like the son is afraid of clowns, but then it's revealed that his whole family is like clowns. And, and then he gets turned into a clown and it's nightmare fuel like he even the guy himself hates it so it's less killer clowns from outer space more society with clowns you know what that's it it's more society with clowns all this talking to clowns is making me trigger warning all all this talking about clowns is making me nervous damn (laughs) well this episode is very nerve-wracking if you were scared it was by a child by it yeah, but yeah, uh, Balkan Skull's child. iconic cotton candy shot, and uh, I free we freeze framed it at the perfect moment where Skull looks like he's uh he's Santa Claus with a giant beard. Your pink beard, the pink beard. Yeah. Santa Claus with a coke problem because he's like super skinny. Oh yeah, yeah, that too. <laughs> Santa Claus was a coke problem. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> God, now now this, it, 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 this thing early. Just, Wow, okay, well, I guess the episode's over. <laughs> it's like, kids, what you learned today? Sand has a Coke problem. Oh. Uh... <laughs> this, um, but I, I gotta say, the shot of the carnivals, uh, or uh, of the carnival and the rides and whatnot, it, it really puts you back into, like, that feeling of, like, uh, you, you go to, like, a mall parking lot or something, of, uh, like, a small town or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and, and and you just have like that's like that old school carnival vibe, and I just I miss that, you know. Oh now yeah. Now I'm just thinking of that what now I'm just thinking of that one Irish show where there's like, oh, uh, we need a nurse to the tunnel of goats. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna ask. <laughs> all I, all I'm thinking is like, you see the carnival, and outside the carnival, outside by the mission doors, you see Virgil with his sad table. Oh no, <laughs> Virgil's a clown. <laughs> No, he's not even a clown. He's just outside the gates because he can't afford admission to get in. He's just. I feel like if he'd be, I feel like he, if he'd be a clown, he'd probably be Pagliacci. Uh, yeah, the saddest clown. By the way, rest in peace, Mike Jones. Yes, you're getting that. Rest in peace. You're getting that sauce up in there. You're getting that Olive Garden. You're getting that fuck money. Yeah, I was gonna say he's getting that fuck money up there. Yeah. Anyway, back to the episode. <laughs> Um, so we, we, of course, we get a shot of the five, and we get Trini's, I want to say, third family mo- member, second family member that's been introduced, Sylvia. Sylvia is the second, second of three total at this yeah. point. And I do have some information on Sylvia. Sylvia, uncredited, uh, was played by Alyssa Poblador. Mm-hmm. 
and she has been in uh, four things. She was in two episodes of Mighty Morphin. She's in another episode in season one later down the road. Probably a different wow, character. she actually does make another appearance. She'll she probably, does come back. She's probably a different character then? Uh, yeah. Uh, she was in a movie called Camp Nowhere. Ooh, I've never seen that, but I want to. She was in the Disney movie Freaky Friday. Which one? Jamie Lee Curtis one or the, the Lindsay Lohan? The Lohan's? first one. The first one. Oh, the okay. one from 95. So okay. yes, the Jamie Lee Curtis one. And then she was also on a Nickelodeon show, which, and I can't believe this show is real. It's called Sports Theater with Shaquille O'Neal. Oh my god, I remember that show. It was awful. <laughs> so yeah, that that's... Uh... That's uh, that that's Sylvia's little filmography. There there are some other filmographies that are more impressive later. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, let's see where are we at. So, just with the recap, uh, we get uh Sylvia, and I want to say at this point, um, does she wander off? No. Uh, there, there's. She wants to. Uh, Go with stay with pineapple after uh, Billy does some juggling and drops some eggs on Bulk and Skull. That's uh, it. but no, she goes and watches the gymnastics with uh with the rest with uh, the rest, and uh, this is where Rita gets her plan to uh, uh snatch uh Sylvia, use her as bait to uh bait the uh bait the rangers into uh falling into her trap which involves her monster of the week which we reveal is pineapple <laughs> <laughs> which i i i honestly i gotta say this is probably one of the only times where the monster of week is scarier as a human than he is as uh as a monster <laughs> I agree. Yeah, because as a mon as, as a monster, he's the pinoctopus, and he's not really that scary at all. But God, he yeah. the human version he's terrifying. I thought he was supposed to be like a Portuguese man of war. First time I saw him, Aldo Montoya. You said that joke last time, and it didn't land. <laughs> they don't know that. <laughs> yeah, no, but yeah, I don't know who that is. Just incredible. Just, Before he was just oh, incredible. God, now, now I'm sad. Because I do yeah. like Just Incredible. <laughs> Just Incredible's pretty good. Yeah. The rat face knacker. <laughs> oh my god. All right. Okay, so let's see. Uh, the where are we at? So we got the monster of the week with the eggs. Or, uh, mm -hmm. we're, sorry, English. Uh, we got the pine octopus. Yes. Which is a really and odd then... name, but what, let's go with it. <laughs> And then we got, and, and then I have to talk about this scene because I still have no idea why they're doing this. That they start doing like a human pyramid for, with a clown. For some reason, this yeah. show they act as they're being teenagers, but they act like twelve year olds. Yeah, I mean, like I, from what I was, I rewatched the episodes uh, because we were recording this again. Uh, from what I understand, they went and saw gymnasts, and then they wanted to do a human pyramid, and then they just did a human pyramid. Yeah. And while they were doing the human period, <laughs> wait, wait a minute. While they were doing a human pyramid, yeah, yeah. Uh, I did not say human period. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought you said human while tyranid they, for a second. While they were doing the human pyramid, uh, pineapple comes and snatches Sylvia in an average carnival moment kidnapping with a clown yes oh and let me just I, mention the that, red uh, tape that would be laid all over this place like um the new like news stories it's like clown abducts 12 year old girl from carnival bam, 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 bam. stand down an amber yeah. alert an amber alert. <laughs> also amber because the color of the clown's hair was amber uh yes also um speak about the Pyramid was the because uh, they say they saw gymnast. Amy Jo Johnson and David Yost in real life were actually gymnasts. Wait, oh, David Yost was how... a gymnast. Yeah, David Yost. Yeah, yeah. Which explains how they could do this pe human period pretty easily, <laughs> considering <laughs> they're all pretty. <laughs> yeah, the human pyramid. Yes, I understand. Yes. <laughs> I said human pyramid. I did you not did. say did. human period you say, again. You did say no, human you did. Pyramid. You said pyramid. You said pyramid. The time. I swear. <laughs> But anyway, the clown he snatches up Sylvia. And and yeah, they wander off for a bit, and then Trini finds her. And then we get the highlight of the episode. Oh, yes. Where uh, 
uh, fucking uh, Tilvia pineapple. fucking dies. Yeah, before pine, that, pineapple. Before that. Go ahead. Oh, before that, before no, she dies. No, not before that. I was just making a joke, Andreas. Yes, oh. I know. <laughs> yeah, no. Pineapple, who uh, went to his nearest Scholastic Book Fair and decided to take inspiration from his favorite book series, Flat Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes. That's a lot. I like that uh, book. I, sh- I never turns read those into a card Turns her into a cardboard cutout. Flat Stanley met the president once. Really? Yeah. Huh. I'm pretty sure it was Bush. Oh, wait. <laughs> original Bush or Junior? D- uh, junior. Okay. W. W. All right. It'd be, it's like it came out during like George, like George Bush Sr.'s run, but... but or no, it, it came out during like uh, George W. Bush's run, but he just met George Bush Senior for like no reason. Yeah, that would be funny, honestly. But yeah, it's like Lincoln, what are you doing here? Yes, so Sylvie gets turned into a uh, cardboard cutout, and uh, this has some scary connotations later that I caught uh, when I was watching these episodes alone. <laughs> we'll uh, get to that when we get to the the bit later with Alpha. Yeah, for sure. So. And uh, as um, Trini is carrying around cardboard Sylvia, uh, the the rest of the gang are on that swing ride that was always kind of scary to me, but, like, it was a bit too lame to be, like, all the way scary. And, uh, and then, like, immediately as soon as they figured out it's a plan of Rita's, we, 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 we get... With the beautiful line delivery from Jason. Attention, everyone! Get out! And everybody starts Attention, running. Attention, everyone! Get out! And everyone starts running. Everybody starts running even before he finishes a sentence. <laughs> Great acting. I really like. I do wish they waited for like the read a bit because uh, all the, when they started running, it reminded me of the South Park bit of the the South Park bit. Run, old people driving. Oh, that old people driving. Run, <laughs> everyone running away from Country Kitchen buffet, yeah. and everyone just runs. <laughs> and. Uh, and and then um as uh as all the crowd uh. To, to dis- as the crowd dissipates, we get it's, it's all the clowns efficient. turned into putties. Yep, and they all have really like cute clown accessories. One of them juggles, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it's pre- it's honestly a great use of the putty suits. Honestly, like yeah. uh, spe- like clown variant putties is definitely an action figure I want down the line. Oh yeah, I'm down for that too. And Billy gets yeah, distracted sure. as well because the the main clown Pennywise just goats him into following him. It's like Billy, come over <laughs> here, and he yeah, does. Yeah, come save Sylvia. And Jason's like, "Don't follow him, Billy." And then Pineapple's like, "Come with me." And then Billy just leaves. And I'm like, I just put in my notes. Billy is an idiot. Yes, he's Again. a smart one. He's a smart one, but he's an idiot. So that's why you put Billy's an idiot the first time. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Um, there, I knew that there was one specific putty patroller I wanted to mention during here. Um, I just have to Cause remember. Because we, we get a huge fight scene in the carnival with a bunch of different uh, rides getting featured. There's a fight scene uh, at a sort of like uh, drop tower-ish type ride. Uh, there's, a, there's a fight scene at a merry-go-round with Billy and uh, Pineapple and some putties are there. The only thing I have to note about this part is that behind the, like uh, across from the merry-go-round is a haunted house that is called Nightmare on Helm Street. <laughs> What's up with that? It's, it's like they're clearly trying to avoid copyright, but I just, in my head canon, it's just Gregory Helms opened up a haunted house at this carnival. He's uh, Gregory <laughs> Helms before WCW. A 16 year old opens up a carnival. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, it was, it's just such a great name. Uh, so, uh, I think, so, so I think I know who you're ta- I think I know who you want to talk about, Malcolm. It's the guy that Jason fights. I want to say so, yeah, because, um, I, I am looking here through the different actors on this episode uh, who played putties, and 
Specifically, um, who wears Neo Edmund? That's his name. Yeah. Neo Edmund. He's one of the putties that, um, the uncredited putty here, but looking at uh, his personal IMDb, he has not only been in like Power Ranger episodes in the past and future, but looking mm. here, he's probably a who's who of like 90s like monster actors for american toku like he showed up in mighty morphin he showed up in zeo he showed up in uh animorphs animorphs okay all right as as an actor uh named gavin or he played the character gavin gavin Uh, the weirdest toku i had no idea existed Mystic Knights of Tirnanog. Uh, that's uh, wow. That show brings me back. <laughs> that's a fucking deep cut. Yeah, I was, I he was also in thing. VR Troopers, right? Was um, he? Yes, yes, he was Bugbot. Bugbot. Yeah, okay. and, and right. he was also in. I remember you mentioning this earlier. He was in Big Bad Beetleborgs as Big well. Bad Beetleborgs. Yeah, actually, I did my research to see who he was, and he was the character Wolfgang, which I'm Ooh. pretty sure is the. You play the... Okay, all right, all right. Yeah, or sorry, he was Wolfgang. Yeah, Wolfgang. Well, well, well yeah. with two L's. Yeah, because yeah. they can't call him the Wolf. That's copyright. Mm. Yeah. So they had to call him Wolfgang. And then there was uh, the. I, I had to bring this up. He was also in Mouth Rider. Mass Rider. Uh. Mass Rider. <laughs> Furbus is careening into the stream. Oh, it, fucking Furbus. And uh, the last couple credits I want to mention are he was in Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad. I love that show. I oh, do, God. too. He better not be in the one I think you're about to say. And probably, like, one of the more unique things, uh, credits on his IMDb, because they're right next to each other. Sorry, three of them are right next to each other. The Wizard. The, mm. Is that the movie Wizard or something else? Yeah. Yeah, with yeah, the power plays... glove. It's oh, so bad. I love the power. Oh, yeah, you said it. Never mind. Uh, Freddy's Nightmares. Okay. The Freddy TV show? Yeah. That's pretty awesome, actually. He is credited as Boy in Basement. Boy in awesome. Basement, about to get killed. And then finally, the weirdest one of them all, Small Wonder. Oh my God, Small Wonder! I don't even know. I don't even know what that show is. It's like it a is... rich man who makes up a, a a real life little girl robot doll to play with his kids. It's creepy. Oh, I hate. I hate that. Yeah, I'm and... glad you did. I'm glad you didn't say he was from Tattooed Teenage Alien Fighters from Beverly Hills. <laughs> oh, I'm very happy he's not in that. But the thing about small wonder is before we get back to the episode is the fact that it lasted for four years too long yep it did i think they brought it back a little bit didn't they no they did not and i'm thankful that they didn't i'm i'm no i don't want to see this i'm not watching it save your sanity you'll you'll be doing yourself a favor so thank you um as uh we get i want to say we get the putty fight with some great use of the uh of the 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 carnival rides and i mentioned nightmare on helm street already yes and uh then we get the the final clown wait wait, uh, you forgot to mention pineapple forgot to mention that that one putty that goes around in the ride that's the one one putty that you're gonna mention (laughs) Right, the one that kills me every single time, where I pray to God they did not attach a stunt performer to this ride that goes all the way around. I I can't remember what the name of it was again, Um, but it's one of those rides that literally, it, it just does a whole loop, and this guy is attached to the outside. And I just, I, I'm just saying, please be a dummy, please be a dummy, please be a dummy. Please be a dummy. If it's actual stunt man, he has some balls, and he must be shitting himself at the same time. This was released in the 90s. Safety wasn't invented yet. It was also under Saban, who thinks safety is for chumps. Yes, exactly. We'll get to that in a few episodes. Um, so then we get Pineapple melting into... Uh, melting! The... Into Pine- the octopus. 
Yeah, and then, uh, more if you have than... anything else to m mention here, Adam, I'll let you take I, away. I do have something to mention. Pinoctopus's voice actor uh, is, and I'm shocked we haven't brought this up yet, he is one of the most iconic voices in Power Rangers. Uh, Tom Ooh. Weiner. Tom Weiner? Is, um, yeah, Tom Weiner. He is the man... He's basically the monster man. He has been involved in, let me pull it up here, exactly how many episodes he's been in of Mighty Morphin. It's down here somewhere. But he's been in a lot of stuff. He's been in a lot of video games, a lot of animes. He, he's a very, he's been in Mass Rider. Oh, Mass Rider. No! Yeah. So, sorry, I, I, I looked up Tom Weiner as well, because you mentioned him. He worked on the good, the bad, and the ugly. Ooh. He did. He was crew on the good, the bad, and the ugly, and he was involved in fifty-three episodes of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Doing voice he monsters did, and putty monsters and all that. He he did voice work on epi on in season one, episode two to episode fifty. Okay, all right. Whoa. So he did work on all of those episodes, and he often played the Monster of the Week. Like, for example, he voiced Bones in episode two. He voiced Minotaur in episode three. Okay, all right. Uh, he voices he voiced the Nasty Knight in Happy Birthday, Zack. So he he's the monster dude. He's the go-to yeah. monster guy, yeah. He's the go-to monster guy. And yeah, and in the in he's in every one of the episodes we're covering today, and he voices the main monsters in this episode and the last two episodes. Okay, all right. He, cool. He's also done he's also done work on Power Rangers Time Force, Power Rangers Wild Force. He's just prolific in the terms of monster voice acting that he had to get a shout out. You are a legend, Tom Weiner. Yes, Tom Weiner, you officially earned the badass seal of approval yeah sorry absolutely. Absolutely. I, agree. <laughs> I really agree i but, agree as well he, he he also like is big time into the anime uh scene like so many voices in d d d different um genres even like it wasn't just like robo stuff like this dude you you've earned your metal like you you you've earned your time he Oh, he was also in. Uh, sorry, I'm just going through this as we're checking out the pod, or as, as we're talking here. Oh, man. And um, the one that I noticed was the anime adaptation of the old school. I want to say one of the biggest films ever made, Metropolis. Ooh, he was in that was, anime. What? Metropolis. That's like from 1920. Yeah, um, there was a film done by, I can't remember who worked on it, but basically one of the godfathers of anime himself, I believe one of the... Uh, it was Rin the same guy who did Akira. It was the same guy who did Akira. That's it, thank you. Um, so and, in Metropolis, uh, it, he must be like... It's basically an anime reinterpretation of that movie. Oh, it's yeah. an anime. I thought you meant the live action one. Never Not mind. the actual movie, no. Yeah. No, it's more like a yeah. that one or like an adaptation of the original source material. I was about yes, to say, he was, if he was in, he was in the movie from Metropolis, he played the Empire State Building. Okay. <laughs> I was about to say, because if he was in Metropolis, the one from the 40s, he'd be like, what, 80 during this time playing, uh, yeah, a mod's yeah. doing the voice? Yeah, so, so he'd be as old as I feel. feel. Yeah, so now that we're done that tirade, we uh, get Pine Octopus. He exists now. Pine Octopus? Yeah, and we cut back, I believe this is where it cuts back, to Trini uh, having cardboard Sylvia up on a table, and Alpha 5 is there, and this is where I point out Alpha 5, you got a fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh... and we're not talking about the actor, we're talking about Alpha. <laughs> We're talking about Alpha 5 specifically. He got that robo cake. <laughs> he robo cake. I got I gotta make a t-shirt out of that. He got robo cake. Delicious robo cake. Uh, and, <laughs> and we we get the re the reveal of why she was turned into cardboard or how specifically. Uh, cause I didn't catch this when we were watching it together. I, when I was watching it by myself, I heard what Alpha said. Alpha says basically that the only thing that Sylvia is missing is water. So in order to turn someone into a cardboard cutout, 
he sucks all of the water from you, which is incredibly creepy. Yeah. Yeah. That, I, that's... So I don't get it, but okay. Well, it, it's, it's also why. It, yeah. Um, th I think there's actually a plot or something of like a. I can't remember what it was, but I'll, yeah, I'll get back to you. Uh, continue. Yeah, and that's why you need water to uh, uncardboard people because that confused me the first time we watched it. It's <laughs> It's because he literally took all of the water away from their cut the cardboard cutouts. It was Cell, by the way. That's what that reminded me of. It was, yeah, it does remind you of Cell, absolutely. I uh, drink people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Except he doesn't. Except he doesn't drink people. He just throws people at glitter, glitter at them, and uh, just that makes them and not that makes them dry. Mm. Uh, but yes, that's uh, that's how. That's how they save uh, Sylvia, because they, they just dump a bunch of water on her, and then Alpha thought it wasn't enough, so she he goes to get more water. Sylvia wakes up, is uncardboarded, sits up, and Alpha just throws a bunch of water on this little child. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, it, and it doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't first. work anymore. At first. At first. And then we get the the cute moment is after he throws the water on Sylvia, she's so confused and is trying to wipe it out of her eyes. Uh, Alpha realizes that Sylvia's awake and he, he has to hide himself. So he just poses and goes dormant uh, in the corner uh, next to like some computer in the corner next to some computers. And it works. <laughs> yeah, it does. You're not gonna, she's not gonna question a robot inside, inside a science lab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure, I guess. And uh, then now that Sylvia is safe, Trini goes back into the fight, and she is the one that helps with, uh, you know, defeating Pine Octopus. And there, I forget who says it. I think someone says a line here that I put in my notes that's what a fruit pretty cake. funny. Yeah, what a fruitcake. That was Zach. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was Zach. Zach called fucking Pine Octopus a fruitcake. What a uh, fruitcake. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a pineapple can be in a fruitcake. I'll be honest, I really want to use that insult more. It's like, you're a fruitcake. You kind of do, <laughs> like, back in the 90s. It was an insult after this. Yeah. Oh, is it actually become an insult after this? Yeah, you're a fruitcake. It, it was an insult in the 90s. Like, it's like yeah. a gay thing, I think. Yeah, like, I don't think so. No, yes, no. Yes, I think it was. If you call yes, it was. No, 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 no. I think if you call someone... A fruit, then yes, but fruit cake. I think it's more like because a fruit cake is filled with like a bunch of nuts and weird stuff. So I think it's meant to be like that guy's crazy. That makes more sense than the possibility of a gay thing, honestly. Yeah, again, that's because you're thinking of fruit. Yes. Yeah. I, but I again, I'm not mean, thinking of a homosexual. Yeah. I'm thinking of an actual fruit. Yeah. <laughs> fruit. All right. <laughs> uh, but yes, they defeat pine. They defeat pineapple. And Rita makes Pine Octopus grow, and we get the Zord sequence, which uh, is notable for being the first Zord sequence that has, like, a significant amount of fighting with the Zords before they combine. Oh, uh, right. We get some of the, um, like, I want to call them the normal Zords. Uh, some of the animal Zords' uh, actual powers, like the Triceratops has hook spikes that fire out of its head and, you know, keeps the pine octopus in place. And the ma the mastodon has ice breath. It it just, it, it ties into their own like, I identity. It's not just like lasers fire out of the front or something. They actually use some creativity in designing the weapons. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's and very it's interesting on how they cool. did it. But they always do become the Megazord, and, uh, you know, the Megazord thing happens. Megazord sequence does become initiated. And this is something I have in my notes, but I honestly think that we were overreacting when we saw it last time. Because the Zord fires off a laser to defeat Pine Octopus, and everyone is say everyone said that the T-Rex did it. It's actually the T-Rex, because you can see the claws on the bottom. It's I not the it, it, it's the foot of the T Rex. Yeah, I can see. I could, yeah. was, I could have sworn it was just the foot of the Zord, but maybe I was just looking at it wrong. Well, it's because the foot of the 
Well, well, the left foot of the Megazord is the head of the Triceratops. That's yeah. true, actually. So it was just the T-Rex. Yeah, okay. Let's mm -hmm. say it's the T-Rex for the meme. It's uh, the left and right foot. The left foot for the uh, Megazord is the Triceratops, and the right foot is the Sabertooth Tiger. And that is true. My best theory is why they did that is legit just put a Megazord sequence in the episode for ratings. And also yeah. because they were yeah, like brand new to, at they, this show and they were trying to... They need to edit. push the toys. They need to push the toy sales. Yeah. Plus, it is one of the coolest toys ever made. Plus, if you think it that's crazy, if you think that's crazy, wait until you see season two when they try and mix do Ranger footage with Die Ranger footage at the same time. Hey, at, le at least there was no giant Japanese child this time. Yeah, very true. <laughs> you say that like that's a bad thing. I, that thing, or that thing. That, thing? that child <laughs> won the fight. <laughs> yeah, that was that was great. Uh, do you want to do a wrap up, Malcolm? Uh, yes. Uh, so finally, in this, uh, uh, we get the the ending with uh, unfortunately. Uh, with the reader wrap up, unfortunately, no. Um, I have a headache. Count no eha or iha, iha. And I then, um, and then we we get the most dangerous stilts ever built by anyone. Billy, <laughs> yeah, Bill, Billy stilts, which to be fair, probably are dangerous, not because you can fall and hurt yourself, but because there's probably nails that could give you tetanus. Oh yeah, that too. Probably, uh, I, I will. It, it looks like a lot of like uh, PCP P, PCB pipes, PCV PVC PVC PCP pipes PCP pipes. <laughs> what? <laughs> and, and at the end of this episode, Billy becomes addicted to PCP. Da, 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 da. I went already got you the know money. What, that, that's the best wrap up we can do for this episode. And I went so. already got the money for the PCP because he probably sold Sylvia because we never see her again after this. Dun, 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 no, dun, we dun. do. There, she's in another episode of, it, it, later in the season as a different character. No, as nope. Sylvia. Oh, okay, all right, good to know. I'm gonna reverse oh. that. I'm gonna reverse that. Dun, 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 dun. Skull didn't yeah. get to her. Skull, Skull. Skull's count hasn't. Skull's count begins in this next episode. Excuse you. Yeah, yeah no, we'll, we'll we'll talk with, with the next episode, which is season one, episode twelve, Power, Power Ranger, Ranger Punks. Punks, which is probably like how I had a somewhat connection with uh, the Happy Birthday Zach episode before. This one I have an even weirder connection to because. I never saw this episode as a kid. I read the the novelization. You read I the novelization. About that connection. You just read the novelization of the episode. Which, whenever I think about novelizations of TV episodes, I think of one really weird example, which is the show Adventures of Wonderland had a banned episode that it starred OJ Simpson called oh White Rabbits God. Can't Jump. I it was called White. Yeah, it was called White Rabbits Can't Jump. And the episode never released because of, you know, his his issues uh, legally. Mm -hmm. what he did. The novelization of it made it out. <laughs> oh, that's God. amazing. Yeah. So, so you could read the episode, but you couldn't watch it. So Mighty Morphin it's Power it's Rangers. Locked in, it's, episode... it's locked in. Locked sorry, sorry, uh, it's locked in. The... Season one, episode 12. Uh, this episode aired September 20th, 1993. Um, Three days later. Yeah, I you would think they would have gone with like the week thing, like well once a week, but no, if they got it, turn it out. Um yeah. and, and I will say it isn't like a laziness thing because this is probably like we say this almost every single time, but this is my favorite episode so far. Yeah. And it's a uh, pretty for, good episode. Uh written by Mark Hoffmeyer and directed by David Blythe. David Blythe. David Blythe. Let's go. And uh this episode uh starts off pretty basic of course with the guys uh with the gang excuse me uh playing the volleyball mm -hmm. and then i want to say uh who uh, is kimberly off on the bench yeah kimberly, kimberly brings, brings the drinks he brings in the drinks yeah mm -hmm. and then billy tags her out and goes and has a drink and then of course that's when they uh that, that's when zach and uh, kimberly's team starts to win yeah, exactly. <laughs> then we smash cut 
over to Breaking Babu. We have Babu's <laughs> chemistry lab. <laughs> Rita, we need to cook. Rita, my queen, we need to cook. <laughs> yeah, right, okay. Oh my god, I can imagine. Man. <laughs> yeah, so Babu's in his science lab making a, what he calls punk potion, and I actually wrote down the recipe. Yeah, okay. So, the punk potion's recipe is snail slime, spider legs, rattlesnake lips, and poison ivy. Which, Sounds like the recipe for Five Alive. Yeah. <laughs> Which, if it's Poison Ivy, if the uh, oh, episode, I think it was episode six, where they said that Gotham City was canon, if it does exist in this universe, he just stole the villain from Gotham, which means that's one less thing for Batman to worry about. Yeah, Batman doesn't have to worry about Poison Ivy. <laughs> I forgot that Batman's canon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh. What a what uh, a universe. Yeah, he makes the, he ma- he makes the punk potion, which is really just some cherry Kool Aid. And I I don't know uh when when he does make it and uh, he's flying out to go drop off the potion to the Rangers. Does anyone else when they're riding the bikes like in their head just hears? I was about to make I was about to make the. The Wicked Witch allegory. Yeah, I can. I think that too. Whenever I see Rita doing the tricycle, like yeah, I'll yeah, get yeah, you, yeah. my pretty, and your little Zordon too. <laughs> and then I don't know why I just think of Ralph from Friday the Thirteenth riding his bike as well. Nice, but with the Wicked Witch music too. So we uh, we get the potion drop off of Babu and uh, the other. Th- oh no, no, sorry. We we get the putty fight. That's it. We get the putty fight. With some awful ass editing. With yeah. the cringe 90s editing of repeating the same shot over and over again. It was cool back then, but not not so much, because it's actually worse. Re, it's re, good. repeat! Yeah. They literally use it in every fucking 90s show. I swear to God, it's in, like, every Nickelodeon show. Yeah. Is this better, like, is it re- the repeat footage, or do you like the extreme thing where they... Show them like really face when they showed her face close up. I prefer the when I like genuinely compared to this, I prefer the stupid trope of everything getting blurry in slow motion or the camera flying away with something. Right, that too, yeah. Oh, I, I love I lo- 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 like or, or where like it's a POV cam of like someone throwing something and then like it's a POV of the thing being thrown. Yeah. yeah, like, like that, that, comes, like up, that comes up later. The that twinkie? comes up later this episode, Malcolm. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's perfect. I I don't know where it's from, but I just remember there someone put like a camera on a Twinkie that was thrown, and just like, why don't we use that more? Yeah, for sure. The twinkie cam. Like, I, I fucking mean it, man. Twinkie what? cams will save cinema. What is like what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Twinkie Cam. Uh, but yes, the putty fight is all there as a distraction, ultimately, just so that Babu can get the punk potion and the drinks. Or he can spike their drinks. Yeah, And then uh, the best acting of the show comes out. Billy's punk acting is 10 out of 10, and it deserved a daytime Emmy. <laughs> yeah! Um, I love David Yost. <laughs> he was never the best actor on this show, but I, I love you, David Yost, but uh, wow, okay. <laughs> uh, it was really, giving the best performance what? only the actors from Super Capers could represent. Yeah. Yeah! I was just going to say he just sounds like Joey Wheeler 90% of the time he's on screen. Uh-huh. Yeah! Get him, Yug! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow, yes, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like Kim just gets up. It's like get out of my face. Yeah, get out of her face. And then you're just bulk and skull again. Yeah, uh, oh, we'll get to that in a second. Yeah, uh, but yes, they they get all pissy and leave. And uh, Trini gives the ultimate observation that maybe they just had a bit too much sun, and that's why they're acting like dicks. Yeah. Well, was this the first time the Rangers got like? Uh, something happened to them by the villains. I think it was. So this is new to them. I think so it's I... the first time, yeah. Yeah. 
But it's not the yeah. last time because whenever Rita does, whenever the villain does something to the Power Rangers personality, they don't question, huh? Lord, uh, they must have Lord Zed or Rita must have been up to this. But no, they go like, what's up with them? <laughs> yeah, maybe because this is like the first time, so they're not used to personal attacks yet. Oh yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. But like after a while, yeah. they oh, keep on doing. Yeah, it. like after the fourth time, you got to realize there's a pattern. I think. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you're just as stupid like Billy. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Billy is an idiot again. <laughs> so then we get a shot of Rita g g giving her big eyes staring at us through the telescope. And she goes over to Fenster and we get our monster of the week. One of the more iconic ones. A oh, I'm, 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 I'm sorry to interrupt you. But while she's walking over to Fenster's workshop... Uh, Babu is just trying to take all the credit and is trying to win like a planet or a small asteroid and just Rita's ignoring him the entire time and I'm like poor Babu man he actually did something this is not the first this is not the only time he did something him and Squat one time in another episode decided to make a monster while Rita was asleep and he did a good job at it yeah it's so hilarious yeah, we, get, we get the terror toad we get the Terror Toad, who I've been told is iconic. Yeah, it's iconic because one of, he's very iconic. He he definitely is um, iconic to me because I was so weirded out by the faces showing up on his stomach later in the episode. Maybe in the book, <laughs> they I they mentioned it in a in the book, but they never like showed an image of it in the novelization. I was pissed. Oh wow! Okay, that's that's interesting, actually. Uh, but yes, the Terror Toad. Uh, now that the Power Rangers are like divided, her his her plan is to just use the Terror Toad to cause some mayhem in Angel Grove and take over the world. Of course, of course. Oh fuck! That reminds me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Small sidebar about Tom Weiner again. I forgot to mention, Tom Weiner is also in the Street Fighter animated movie. Does he, oh, shit, does, does really? Does he play Bison? He plays, he plays M. Bison. Ooh, nice. Ooh. Yes! Yes! Uh, of oh, that's him? That's him! Yes! Yes! Oh, I love this man already. Play the clip. Play the clip on the video. Okay. Yes! Yes! It's a, it's amazing though. Yeah, it's so great. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> oh, he's uh, a meme. He is a meme. <laughs> and to move on from one funny thing to the next, we get uh, an image of Skull's first victim, Willie. <laughs> 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 it's true. It's like, yeah, Bulk and Skull get the shot of their lockers. Skull pulls, has a skull in his locker, and it's like, well, I wonder who that'll be. I guess that's Willie. <laughs> Yeah. See, my, my personal interpretation is Skull's frustrations over the gang bully him every single episode is whenever we get the stinger at the end with the credits afterwards, in that time between episodes, Skull's racking up a very hefty body count. This, this is Dexter. where Skull's kill count officially begins. His origin and you can't story. convince me that Willie wasn't his first victim. His origin story begins here. His Dexter era. <laughs> Yeah, so Skull has a skull in his locker, and Bulk's locker is jammed, and when he finally opens it, a bunch of food falls out because he bought the food, the food in bulk. Go to the corner. It's... Go to the corner. <laughs> Bad joke. Bad joke. <laughs> you guys laughed. Yeah. We did, we did. I just had to say it. Go to the corner. Yeah, I know, I know. And then Bulk and Skull, in awe, stare at probably one of the coolest bloody things I've ever seen, and that's Eve, like, punk power, sorry, heard, and, uh, Engl words, jeez. Words, yeah. um, it's hard. He, he stares at the two rangers come down the stairs, and a few things I want to mention is, one, the amazing music done by Ron Wasserman again. Hey! It kind of reminds me of, with the hammer, it reminds me of Owen Hart's uh, theme after he went solo. And just barely and, looks down the hall and he says, I am not a nugget. <laughs> and their acting is probably some of my favorite 
in these episodes, like in, in the episodes we've seen so uh, yeah, for sure. coming up and beforehand, because it, it's just, it's so entertaining to see typical good guy characters like flip and 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 it really shows the actors range. And Amy yeah, Jo Johnson sure. to me is the MVP of this episode. This is where one hundred percent she is just chewing up the scene, and she is literally that. You know, yeah. I have such a crush on her from the first episode, but this is the one episode where I go like, oh my god, I'm actually in love with yeah. this woman. <laughs> She's super great in this. But I will say I think Billy's just a little bit hotter. I, I see it. I see it. He's showing... Oh, he's half showing his body because he does have... He's got sp- that necklace that's really cool looking and those fucking Bret Hart glasses. Yeah. And I... Uh, oh, the Bret Hart glasses. <laughs> okay. I have to mention here with uh, Kimberly and Skull's interaction here, you can't convince me otherwise that this is pretty much this is the origin of the theory, in my opinion, that in your Kimberly head, and Adam. Skull ended up together. In your head canon? In my head canon. Because in later on, uh, we get the character Spike in Samurai, and there's theories on who his mother is. Yeah. And a, a lot of people think Kimberly. In yeah. Your, and, canon. and that checks after, like, how hot this this entire exchange is for skull because like he she she grabs skull by the collar and is like why don't we go together on saturday and tear up the town and she does a laugh and and we and we basically see if kimberly wasn't like a big time valley girl and like always a punk she'd basically just be female skull yeah Yeah, and it's pretty hot honestly because she does the laugh and she does the uh chewing of the gum and the the laugh and the gum yeah the chewing of the gum and the laugh is my favorite, sorry, second favorite scene of this exchange. My favorite scene follows soon after with Billy and, and Bulk. Yeah, Billy bullying Bulk. <laughs> he just, he threatens him, and then the way he slams Bulk against the locker. Oh. Got it! Yeah, I got it! It was it's like... A- Amazing. I was like, damn, yeah. Billy. I have to point out my favorite part of this scene is after Billy lets Bulk go. He grabs Skull and they run away. But my favorite part is as Bulk is running away holding Skull, Skull is just being dragged backwards and he's just got a hand out trying to reach out for Kimberly. <laughs> I want, I want. I love you. <laughs> Like I said, by the way, like I said, like Amy Jo Johnson, she has a great career in acting, but you can tell from this episode here that she's going to become a great actress because she's killing yeah, it. This is the this is the episode where Amy Jo Johnson reveals that she has what it takes to be a great actor. Yeah, I, I want to say she uh, as an actress, she also like uh, expanded into um, writing and directing as well. If yeah. I want to, she did a lot. Of, she directed her own movies and written a lot of stuff she still does that to this day let's see um Amy joe johnson you're all right yeah you're all right oh yeah i uh she was also in the uh the canadian tv show flashpoint i love that show great oh, show god i forgot i forgot flashpoint was a thing also after she left power ranger she went straight to felicity what a career change i never saw felicity well, well, well what is that show about Felicity is about this uh, stalker girl who falls in love with the... Okay, she graduates, and she's feeling like shit, and some guy that's in her class graduates and, like, perks her up by saying, Hey, we graduated. We're going in good. You look good. Anyway, I gotta go. And she, like, starts stalking him after that and goes to the same college that he does. So it's basically this girl stalking this one dude that she met for five minutes, and Amy Jo Johnson is her best friend, and it's just a cool show. From a whole yeah, premise. like legit. I the, the the synopsis of the show Felicity is legit. Just a young girl fresh out of high school follows her high school crush to college to be near him. Yeah, that's the entire <laughs> point of the show. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, uh, not creepy just, at all. Not creepy, but it made a good show. I'm just gonna say, and I'm not trying to like stop the sidebars because they're great. But we're an hour in, and uh, we've only talked about one and a half episodes. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. We have a lot to talk about. Okay. So we we are now in command center with Alpha uh, are reacting to Billy and Kimberly being uh, dicks. 
Yeah, they're just dicks. <laughs> yeah. And, so, and, and uh, something I noticed upon rewatch is that when um when Billy goes to touch the cage and gets electrocuted, Kimberly does the skull thing as well, where she has to repeat what he does. I thought it was Billy that. Oh yeah, she explained skull. No, Billy mind. touches it first, but then Kimberly does touch it as well. Yeah. Yeah, they're in behind in what uh, what uh, what Zordon calls a transparent force field, which is really just one of those TNA stripper cages from the early day, the first couple ep, couple from what, the Asylum era. From the Asylum era, they had the TNA girls just dancing, very non. They're not comfortable. They're just they're just, they're, yeah. just walk, they're just standing there. It's a Tuesday night, and they need money. Yeah. <laughs> now, now I think TNA should bring the cage back, but put Scott Steiner in anyway. Um... <laughs> Yeah. No. <laughs> Lock him in the cage. He can't get out. I just want to be clear. I am absolutely 100% joking. That is a joke. I would not want to see Scott Steiner do that because he is a scary, scary man. Please don't eat me. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. So we now realize uh, how we are going to save Billy and Kimberly, because Zordon says, "Behold the view, the viewing globe." And, and we get a shot of uh, him mentioning the uh, the singing squash that they that the uh, the like juice or something of the singing squash. The sap. The sap, that's it. And and we get one of the weirder shots, which is, or one I got to bring up, which, yes, is reusing footage from the Sentai, but this is one of the few times we get a visual shot of Zordon as, phys like, physical body Zordon. As a human, yeah. yeah. Before he was put into the tube. Well, I, I, I wouldn't say human, since he's not of Earth. He, uh, Andreas, home planet? Eltar. Thank you. Mm. Like a, he's a uh, wizard. Yeah, so, he's uh, a wizard. Altarian, I guess. An Altarian. That's a good word. Uh, why is it now yeah. that we figure out a name for him? He's an Altarian. As soon as the show ends. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's a great shot of your Ranger footage. That's just the that's just the the mentor from from Zhu Ranger, by the way. Yeah. There's a lot of that. Yeah, happening uh, Barza. In the show. Barza. Yeah, Barza. Uh, but yes, uh, he he talks about the singing squash, which is literally just a mandrake root. It yeah, it, it's very um the the Japanese footage they they use is very magic orientated. Uh, so like even down to not just like the monsters of the weeks, but like the plots as well. So like mandrake root is like that, that's probably why they had to come up with one of the weirder names of well, I say one of, but. The names in Power Rangers are just nuts in general. Oh, okay. yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, Come on, so, in uh, season two, they have a monster called the Purse Monster or the Lipstick Monster, whatever. You know what I mean. Oh, my is God, it? there is a Purse Monster. <laughs> Lip Sinker is, is, is her name. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. The, the, I, I just remember this Purse Monster from Zio. But, oh, no, we'll get to that fucking thing. Um, <laughs> anyway. We, we 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 get the the three um, non evil non punked out rangers uh, go uh, get called out to fight the terror toad and uh, get the morphin sequence and all that cool jazz and we get uh, some War. really funny imagery with first uh, Trini being eaten by uh, the terror toad yes Vor. <laughs> And then um, I want to say Zach uh, gets eaten next. And the, in these two shots, they, they get turned into like the orbs and whatnot and get sucked into the monster and, and or get eaten by the monster. And, and then later on, um, well, I'll, I'll get to that. But then uh, Alpha goes to uh, get the singing squash, which it's not the same area shown before. Instead, it's kept in the magnificent, scary land of Trash Bag Island. Yeah, they yep. just went around the corner. Good old Trash Bag Island. <laughs> they just went around the corner. Here we are. <laughs> it, it It's right outside Ohio. Yes. <laughs> Damn, Alpha 5 went to Ohio? That's fucked up, Zordon. Why did we send them to Ohio? That's even worse than, like, going to Lord Zed's home planet. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh, um, anyway. Yeah, Alpha 5 gets the singing squash. He gets the singing squash. The, the putties that were there to attack him get dissolved to death. And then... Um, Electrified or something to death. Yeah, electrified or something. And then we finally get... Um, I want to say Zach gets eaten next. Yeah, Zach gets eaten yeah. next, yes. It, it's, ju- it's just Jason at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, there we go. And uh, and, and we get a f- um, and then we get Alpha giving the juice to uh, or Billy to Sap or so- to, to Billy and Kimberly. I cannot speak today. Um, yeah. And unfortunately, their acting goes back to the way it was before. I really prefer it this way, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Really puts on back his glasses. And then they, they, they get pulled out of the TNA cage. They do the morph sequence, and they get back in the fight. And it, it's pretty much the same uh, stuff as uh, usual fight scenes until then. Until we get an inconsistent shot of the Terror Toad straight up eating Jason with his head flapping all the way back. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty and, funny, honestly. It is, it is. And, and when I was mentioning before about like the monsters being more magic orientated, I did say I wanted to call out uh before with uh, the terror toad here. I think they're going for more like a dragon thing with like I don't know, un- the under the over the chin or under the chin being like his weak spot or like the a soft spot spot, which yeah. is dragon like to me but if there's gain access to its soft underbelly <laughs> i'll have to check it out the or i'll have to do some more research into the creature next chance i get mm-hmm. uh or into uh the sentai creatures themselves and th- yeah for sure <laughs> and then kimberly point blank shoots an arrow at the terror toad after he after she after he eats Billy and it's just getting the terror toad and Babu praying over this teenage girl. <laughs> it's so <always>. then <laughs> Yeah. Make it sound Kimberly, worse than it naturally is. Yeah. And then and then Kimberly shoots them all out of uh out of the terror toad. They do more basic fighting, and then we get the finale. The way that he, she, that she kills the terror toad is with the fucking arrow Twinkie cam, the Evil Dead cam, where it tracks the arrow and it's just on the arrow, following it as it veers a couple times into the terror toad and blows him up. Oh yeah, wait, I call it the Twinkie cam before, but I'll be honest, the way they shoot it here is more Evil Dead to me, so I, I just hear... <laughs> yeah. And then we got Babu runs off. Yeah, and that is the that that is the end of the Terror Toad, and then we get the wrap-up. It, it it's always weird to me when they don't have a Zord fight in early seasons. But uh, with the wrap up, uh, we get I want to say this is number six for uh, an IHOP. Mm-hmm. And Babu running away like he's in an episode of Benny Hill. <laughs> <laughs> And and then we get the saddest scene in all of Power Rangers. I feel so bad I for know. Skull here, man. I so I do too, man. He shows <laughs> up all dressed up, ready to tear up the town with Kimberly. He's got his best bully clothes on. She said yes, even like it was her. It was actually her pushing the idea for her pushing the date. But still, it's like he finally got his wish, and then it's just like back to normal. You know what? I just realized what this reminds me of. It reminds me of that one tricks commercial where he ha- he finally gets the tricks and he's finally ready to eat the, the tricks. Rabbit is finally ready to eat the tricks. And then he goes to grab milk and there's no milk. Oh, yes. Like she is the trick cereal. He can never get her. Yeah. Silly. <laughs> Which is true. Cause Silly this... rabbit. Kimberly's for kids. Which is true. Because like in season two, again, she gets like turned evil and no not evil a, a, spell, a spell is put on her and she falls in love with skull and breaks his heart again at the end that's oh so unfortunate yeah they oh like God. they keep I, on I, screwing like... with this man's heart you see now you know why he has a body count yes oh my god skull's a cuck but he started with willie first didn't he 
You know, Willie is his first kill. Yeah. But yeah, this, 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 this shit, this shit is why Skull has a body count. This is why. This is why. <laughs> well, no, I, I, I can tell you what happened. Willie was an accident. Willie was just he, he was like doing the basic bullying, but he actually went too far with Willie and killed him. And then it was this episode who realized, hey, you know what? I like killing. <laughs> Dexter moment. Da 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 da. <laughs> Uh damn skull. Wow. And then we and now that now that Skull is a murderer, we move on to season one, episode thirteen. Peace, Peace love, love and woe. woe. Yes, and this episode we start with they're starting out in Ernie's juice bar, starting uh getting ready for the dance. And Zach's like saying, Man, oh sorry, before that, we get Bulk coming in on a skateboard, which is really weird. Yeah, and and Skull comes in and says, make way for the bulkster. Yet somehow you're more credible than Hogan now. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, he like, like crashes. From the 90s. Hulk Sorry, Hogan. Yes. Yeah, One of the is better the than the other. Better. Yeah. And the answer will surprise you. Anyway. So Bulk is like trying to move out the way and then he crashes into Jer Ernie's cake. Not his cake, an actual cake. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn it. That'd be a, certainly a weird episode if it would involve Ernie's cake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ernie's cake has turned into a monster. <laughs> no. Oh, God. <laughs> God, no! No, God, no! So he cuts... All inacula. <laughs> we cut to Rita's palace, and she's seeing all this, and she goes like, you know what? I'm just gonna decide to screw with the rangers here. I'm gonna... Get me Madame Wo. Which is... And then we skip back to Ernie's juice bar, and Ernie kicks out Bulk and Skull and says, like, hey, you know, the only way you come back is if you pay me for the cake. Otherwise, you're out of here. Get the hell out, and throws him out. Yeats. Yeats him out, yeah. Yes. Um, it, I, I do, I would like to bring up beforehand that Peace, Love, and Woe uh, was written by Julianne Clem and directed by Robert Hughes and aired September 21st, 93. Nice. Damn, literally the next day? Yeah, they had the shows every day, like Monday to Friday, because they already That's had these crazy. episodes. Oh, it makes sense now, actually. Yeah, because they already I had these say, episodes filmed, and yeah, they just did it Monday through Friday. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Continue. Sorry. Oh, okay, so we cut back to the the team, the Ranger team, and Zach's like saying, "Yo, Billy, you have a date for the ball?" It's like, and Billy goes like, "Nah, I'm rather focus on my studies because I got to work on this weather machine." And yeah, he's about to go out. Yep. And then he bumps into uh, Billy's next next encounter with women. Billy's next conquest. <laughs> Billy's next conquest, which is actually the female version of himself, Marge. Fem Fembilly, Marge, who I do want to point out is involved in something that so that Andreas might actually enjoy. Uh, I looked it up. Uh, Marge is played by uh, Alexandra Wilson, mm -hmm. who is like a usually a small bit uh, TV show actor. She was on an episode of VIP. She was on an episode of uh, the Tony Danza show. Basically, mostly small things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but she did get involved in one movie that I I hope that Andreas has watched. Did you watch Small Soldiers? Yes. Yeah, she was the secretary for Globotech. She was Mrs. Kegel. Oh my gosh, she was. Yeah, so the Alex Marge ended up becoming a uh, <laughs> beco becoming a secretary for Globotech. I love that movie, Small Soldiers. It's so dumb, but I love it. It's certainly an episode. It's certainly a movie. Yes. It's like Toy Story, but if your toys turn psychotic. Yeah. Remember I had an action figure, the spinning guy. Oh, that guy? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Billy... I thought he was Carnage at first for some reason. Really? Yeah, when I was a no, kid, because I didn't see Small Soldiers before uh, playing with the toy. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Billy bumps yeah. into Marge and... and uh, they instantly like each other, and like she drops her necklace, and Billy picks it up and 
put it back on her, and I gotta say, smooth moves, Billy. God damn, you may be a nerd, but you know how to do the moves. Smooth, Billy. Billy knows how to how to. Billy is a man whore. He does know how to get women on his side. Yes, yes, he does. Uh, so yeah, they're back in the juice bar and uh, they're like talking to each other nerd stuff. And he's like, going like, yeah, I have this weather machine, blah blah blah." Oh, and they, they 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 both talk about sorry Andreas. They both talk about how they both graduated from the accelerated baby genius program oh and I'm just like the PTSD is triggered in my brain. <laughs> That's a bad movie. <laughs> it's a ba it's it's five bad movies in a TV series. You're telling me they made more than after the yes, second one there's, there's five more? movies. There's there's five movies in a TV show. <laughs> Oh my god, and I thought Home Alone was worse when it went up to six. Yeah. It's scary, dude. Yeah. So Jason tells Billy to come on over because there's an emergency. Billy goes over and goes like, what's the emergency? He's like, yeah, bro, you gotta ask her out. And he gets mad saying, that's your emergency? I can't do that. Plus, I got stuff to do. And before he leaves, Arch asks him out. And I'm going like, god damn, Billy, you don't have to do anything. Yeah. He's like, meet me at the park, and we can work on your weather machine. And he, oh yeah, he'll definitely work on your weather machine. He'll definitely get you wet. Yes. <laughs> he'll work on my weather. Hey yo. Hey yo. Hey yo. Hey yo. So then we cut to Madame Woe doing her thing, and I gotta say, this is the best design for a monster of the week ever because she looks amazing. This is a great design, and I just love her long claws, her gem. Uh, just she looks like a, a fucking blizzard ghost. Mm. It's pretty awesome. It's a really good design. Yeah, and then Rita calls her up saying, You gotta do this for me. And yes, Batawo agrees to work with her. And, and then we cut to the park, the little lake there, and Marge is just waiting for Billy and has his little flower dandelion on her hand. Madame Woe shows up. She doesn't sell it. She goes like, who are you? Yeah, she doesn't run away immediately. <laughs> she just goes, who are you? Yeah. You mean, you, you, Which you, is, I guess everyone just does that. Like, I guess Rita's attacks have become so common. They're just like, all right, fuck it. Which one are you? Yeah, some people do run away, but then others just go like, ah, we're doing this today, huh? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so Madame Woe kidnaps Marge into the Madame Woe universe, universe, which is just yeah, a the cave. Madame Woe dimension, yes. and we get some, we get some of uh, Fan Billy's uh, Marge's amazing facials, which I will say are on par with Miss Appleby for being hilarious. <laughs> yes, I agree. Oh my god! Uh, then we cut back to the latest. This is Appleby's. Sorry. No, I was just thinking about Mrs. Appleby's face. Sorry. Right. Yeah. So he come back to the it's lake. It's hard to forget. Billy shows up. Marge is not there. He's t he's sad, but then sees the necklace on the floor. Putties show up, and then the putties just wait until he has a conversation with the Rangers. <laughs> yeah, they wait until they're they're the most polite putties in Rita's force because they literally just wait for him to. Uh, call the rangers and like hey i'm at the lake i need help something's happened to marge and then after he hangs up they start fucking hounding him <laughs> yeah exactly oh he's done his call let's do this he was calling one to collect so let's not bother him <laughs> yeah we can't interrupt his collect call <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's got to save that money so the rest of the gang shows up to beat up the putties and billy's just there and we again we get mm -hmm. these uh 90s uh repeat editing <laughs> And I have here yodeling, because I'm pretty sure there's some weird yodeling in the music at this part. Oh, yeah, there's some weird yodeling when the music starts. That was, like, really weird. Yeah, yeah. So they go to the command center. Zordon tells them about Madame Wo and what she is. And they say, like, he says, like, oh, you got to combine all your powers into one. And Billy accepts it, saying that he'll do it. We get the one-time use of power coin combination. It's one of the many things that this show does where you see something done one time and you never see it again. Yep. And then they morph and they go fight Madame Woe, but she sends them instantly to the uh, Madame Woe universe. 
Billy yep. gets the stuck. Whoa universe. The Whoa universe. The Whoa universe. Better yeah. than Madam Webb's cinematic universe. Oh my God! Don't remind <laughs> you of that. But Billy steps out of the Jew Ranger footage straight into American footage. Looks really awkward just standing there talking to Marge. Tells her she'll be okay. Then goes back into Sentai footage and the fight begins again. Yeah, Billy does a power combination of the one coin. Does a Horukin with it and last through Madam Woe. Uh, there's a, big... a bit of there's a bit of, there's a bit of one off like little like dodgy fun. Then he destroys Woe's crystal, and that causes the Woe universe to collapse. <laughs> yes, it does because we see Marge back in the Woe universe with the rest of the Rangers in American footage and. Again, they're just standing there awkwardly because this is before they start moving around in their suits because they're still we working the on their stuff. And then we get the wibbly-wobbly camera effect, and uh, then they're in the real world, and uh, they the rangers run off to uh, to join the fight with Madame Woe, whereas uh, Marge just, just kind of leans on a rock awkwardly. Yeah, and just watches from afar. Yeah. Uh, then we go back to the footage and they put their weapons together and they kill Madame Wo. They go back to Marge, which they still look awkward just standing there because they haven't done their Power Rangers school yet for acting yet, which yep. is shown and later on. Another, and there's yet another episode with no Zords. <laughs> oh, exactly. And did he, she, we get a, we come back to Rita. Did we get a, you got a headache, Malcolm? I have a headache. I don't uh, think there was a headache this episode. Yes, there was. So we're at seven. Oh, okay. Oh, we're at seven. Okay, great. So then we get back to the juice bar and everyone's dancing. Bulk and Skull are in, in disguises, the worst disguises I've ever seen. And Ernie sees through that <laughs> yeah, I shit. Have it, I have it in my note. I have it in my notes. Bulk and Skull marks. Yeah. Uh, but it's also a bit of Bobby Heenan at Raw because uh, uh, Bulk is like kind of his disguise is more normal. But Skull, or sorry, Skull is more normal. But Bulk is dressed up like some sort of like Russian babushka with like a headscarf. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, what What kind of Ukrainian bubba are you trying to be in Angel? That is one world? ugly grandmother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just reminds me of Bobby Heenan at fucking Raw. Looks kind of like the, gro the, the Rock's grandmama. Oh, owned, you stupid heel. Suck it. What? <laughs> be the Rock's grandma. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm just trying to work the angle that The Rock is a heel and I'm all for Cody Rhodes. Right, Cody yeah. Rhodes. So we come back to Billy and Marge and they're flirting it up and Billy's just got all the moves. Billy's getting some tonight. Oh yeah, he definitely is. Ernie catches Bulk and Skull and is like, I know it's you two. I can't be that dumb. And he like tosses him out. But before he tosses him out, Bulk says, okay, okay, I'll get you your money. Sits down, takes off his shoe. And his smelly and sock. The bank, the fucking bank. Ugh. Yeah, calls it. I'll get you the money from the bank, and then it's in his foot, and yeah. he gives it the Ernie million, million million dollar man moment. Oh, really? Yeah, that too. Ernie and smells the money. Secretly started his plan to murder Ernie. <laughs> <laughs> Ernie. Falls into the cake because of the smell, gets back up, and goes like, screw it, let's dance. And er he just goes and dances. And With Bulk all the cake still on him. Yeah, and Bulk and Skull just look at him like, what just happened? This was a nice little episode. Yeah, it's one of those episodes where Billy, was... you can see that he, he was... his rack count of getting women... Yep, and we are now at two. His body count is at two. Yeah, it is. And it's also the last time we see Marge, so Skull's body count is also at two. He probably <laughs> killed her because he uh, bulk gave him money. I don't know. You think of something. <laughs> he saw that Billy was happy for the first time in his life, and he's like, can't have that. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Billy can't be happy. Screw this. You denied me, Kimberly, so I'm going to deny you Marge. Yeah, as it becomes Marge from Pee Wee's Adventure, Large Marge. Large Marge. <laughs> yes, punishment. I'm not going to kill you. I'm going to turn you into a stop motion cartoon character meant to torment Pee Wee Herman. Yes, and every other. <laughs> so uh, next episode, episode fourteen, Foul Play in the Sky. 
Foul Play in the Sky is definitely one of my two favorite episodes of this batch. Uh, so we open we open at the airport, and at oh sorry, J- uh, Malcolm, did you want to do your production stuff? Uh, yes. Uh, the air date September twenty second, ninety three. Mm. Yep. Literally yep. just the Monday to Friday continues. I guess this yes. is Tuesday um, episode. I guess. Season 1, episode 14. Uh, This one was written and directed by Shuki Levy. One of them guys in Saban's team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Shuki Levy, quack, quack. It's listed here as he was one of Saban's, like, top producers of the company, uh, written numerous episodes of uh, Mighty Morphin. Mm -hmm. Um. He's part of the history. He worked of it. on Mask, Dinosaurs, Dragon Quest, He Man. It, it looks like he is a uh, old school, like uh, worked with uh, old school producer working with kids TV shows for years. Yeah, and he worked a lot with mm-hmm. Saban, and like they're the main guys of this show here. But Saban gets more recognized for it. Yeah, because it's his company. Yeah. Yeah, so we open on the air in the at the airport, and uh, we pull we pull back from the air tower, and uh, Kimberly's there with her uncle Steve, good old uncle Steve, who I did look it up, is played by Douglas Sloan, who is usually a producer. Okay, he was he produced he was a producer on a lot of seasons of Power Rangers. He was a producer on 49 episodes of Mighty Morphin. Mm-hmm. He was a producer for uh, uh, most, if not all, of Zio. Okay. He was a producer for the he was a producer for the first half of Turbo, and then after that, he took a break and was co-executive producer of the greatest film of all time, Johnny Tsunami. <laughs> Johnny Tsunami. All right. Okay. Yeah. Then he also was the executive producer of. Ninja Storm and Dino Thunder. Okay, all right. Oh, that's why I didn't recognize his name because of Ninja Storm and Dino Thunder because he's all over that thing. Yeah. Yeah, he he was an executive producer of a lot of Power Rangers episodes, yeah. but here he's an actor. Yeah. As Uncle Steve. Uh, so it turns out Kim Uncle Steve is a pilot, and her him and Kimberly are gonna go out and uh, do some flying today. Uh, then we cut back to the youth center, and uh, Jason is going at it at a speed bag that Zach is holding. Zach looks over at his at his first and greatest love, Angela. Uh, <laughs> fuck Angela. Zach, you I deserve better. Up, I looked up some stuff on Angela, Andreas, to see if I could if I could persuade you a little bit. No, I I, I, uh, I, I don't have a problem with the actress herself. It's just a character in this. Yeah. So Angela appears in seven episodes of Mighty Morphin. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. She's in that, but her only other acting credit is on a single episode of Walker, Texas Ranger. Walker gave me eight. What? <laughs> oh. Why isn't that's the one quote you remember from that show? Oh yeah, because it was Haley Joel Osment. That's uh, yeah, because he was yeah. being serious. He's he was joking around. All of a sudden, he goes like, "Walker gave me AIDS." What? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, Absolutely Walker stupid. said I had AIDS. No, Walker gave me AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> You're a fucking. I mean, okay, Walker. Ga- I said I have AIDS. Okay, I messed up the line, yeah. messed it up. Yeah. Okay, you, so you, instead yeah. of Columbine for this episode, instead we're talking about Walker, Texas Ranger, giving Haley Joel Osment freaking AIDS. <laughs> hey, I mean, he had to go to Kingdom Hearts somehow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, what character did he play in the voice, <laughs> Haley Joel Osment? <laughs> Yeah, I think he was also in The Boys. Yeah, he was in The Boys, playing basically himself. <laughs> no, uh, he he played like a my like a Mister Mind like Mind guy whatnot. Yeah, yeah. who but got it's... absolutely murked by Billy Butcher. Billy the Butcher, yeah, I love that man. No, Billy Butcher. Billy the Butcher. No, Billy Butcher. There's I no know, the. I know, but I like to call him Billy the Butcher. Okay. Well, that's... But you so anyway, back to Angela. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, Zach tries to put the moves on Angela, and Angela just completely gives him a cold shoulder. Just no game for Zach today. Yes. Rest in peace, Zach's libido. Now <laughs> Billy we... tried. Yeah. Then we cut to uh, Ben. We we cut to Rita's castle, 
Bell. And Rita sees that Kimberly is going to go flying, and he she hatches an evil plan that involves murdering Kimberly. Mm. So she, 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 she teleports. Right more often. She, yeah, she teleports Squat down to the airfield, and he pours a sleeping potion in Uncle Steve's can of not Coca Cola. Uh, but the, the sleeping potion, it's really just some, it, it's either high C ecto cooler, uh, because or the nice, reanimator, or, uh, or, the or the reanimator fluid. But what I was going to, what I was going to say is since they're space aliens, uh, it's just green milk. Oh, green milk. Oh. It makes sense. It's just the Star Wars, it's just the Star, Star Wars green milk. Okay. All right. Makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> you no, gotta, you it gotta probably fix his is bones. just high C ecto. It probably is just high C ecto cooler. If it was it's, green it's, milk, it's, no, no, it's high C ecto cooler mixed with milk. You gotta like focus on your yeah. bones. You gotta make them stronger. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, uh, as after Squat does this, uh, we cut to Bulk and Skull at the airfield with that iconic music, and uh, Bulk has some binoculars, and he's just looking at the airplanes going by and then skull takes a minute to look through the binoc binoculars and ki and uh, bulk looks over and he's like hey look who's over there he yoinks the, the binoculars again from uh, bulk looks through them at kimberly and he's like hey it's kimberly and then they both run at kimberly at top speed yeah and so bulk and skull want to go flying with kimberly and her uncle steve and they just keep calling him uncle instead of Steve, <laughs> which weirded me out. It's like, yeah, why don't you get us get us on that plane, uncle? And then Skull is like, yeah, uncle. And <laughs> Maybe also, Steve is his last name. Also, this is the first yeah. time uh, Hulk and Skull are actually being nice instead of bullying. Like, you see, yeah, they just want to go on a plane. They just want to go on a plane, and eventually Steve relents and lets them on the plane, and we get a fun little scene where. Skull is trying to push Bulk into the back seat, and we get a lot of that, you know, uh, 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 you know, the uh, sound effects. Yeah. And then we get the as uh, he pops into the back seat. <laughs> Everything's okay again. And then, uh, where is where am I on my notes? Uh, yeah. So they take off, and everything's fine. And we cut back to Rita's palace and Goldar. His voice is so close. It's like 97% there. Almost there. And Goldar is yelling about how they're in... Yeah, they're yelling... He's yelling about how they're in the air and soon Kimberly will be uh, no more worry for us because Steve is going to fall asleep and the plane is going to crash. Very dark for a kid's uh, show. Which but, allows wow. them to... Yeah, which allows them to uh, send out their monster of the week, which is the Snizzard. Another cult, the Snizzard, another classic. Who is, who is a who is a more I would say less iconic, more of a cult classic. Also voiced by Brian Cranston from Breaking Bad, before so, Breaking Bad, and yeah. before Malcolm in the Middle, but almost during Malcolm yeah. in the Middle. Yeah. So the Snizzard is voiced by Brian Cranston, and he's half snake, half lizard, and has cobra powers. Cobra. <laughs> Yeah, so that's certainly something. Uh, we cut back to the airplane, and uh, Uncle Steve is starting to lose it a little bit and starting to go unconscious. He fully goes unconscious, and Kimberly panics, and Bulk and Skull also see that uh, <laughs> that their pilot is now unconscious, and they both just start screaming, and <laughs> Kimberly turns around and is like, Will you two shut up and let me think? <laughs> and they just both like stop screaming. They're just frozen in place, and it's like, this is such a Drake and josh moment like all 90 percent of bulk and skulls moments in this in this series are just drake and josh moments yeah uh, moments. or they were like the original drake and josh like or i don't know what would you call it like they were the our our our, our damn it i can't talk there are our modern day version of abbott and costello and stuff like that yeah they're they're yeah, very drake and josh drake and josh yeah, they're very they're very duo comedy like, they're, like, right up there with, yeah, Abbott and Costello and Drake and Josh. No, I'm telling you, uh, Drake and Josh are the modern-day Abbott and Costello. Abbott and Costello. Oh, yeah, 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 Drake and Josh are, yes. So Kimberly gets on the radio at the, on the plane and is like, can anybody hear me, please? I need help. 
my pilot is unconscious and uh instead of the air tower hearing any of this it's alpha five that picks up and it's like kimberly i can hear you <laughs> now we get the crux of the episode the snizzard is attacking so the four rangers now have to go deal with the snizzard while alpha talks kimberly through landing the plane and i gotta say this is my favorite episode of the mayday <laughs> Oh, yeah, and it could oh. show Amy Jo Johnson is, like, getting better and more, way better as an actress, because you can tell that she's working it, and, like, no wonder she had a great <laughs> career. Apparently, no one remembers the Discovery pilot crisis show Mayday. I, I do not. I do not, sir. Sorry about that. That's understandable. It's fine. I thought that would have gotten a reaction, because it did last time. Uh, but uh, it's fine. So, well... Uh, Alpha is instructing Amy on how to land, or is instructing Kimberly on how to land the plane. The four uh, other rangers that are not occupied at the moment get teleported to where the Snizzer is, which apparently is Easter Island? Because there's just a bunch of Easter Island heads in, in Angel Grove for some reason. <laughs> So yeah. that's a fun, it's a fun set piece. I absolutely love the set piece. Uh, there's the usual fighting, and then the Snizzard is uh, going to take over the fight by firing rubber hoses at the Rangers and tying them up. My God. Yes. I mean, they're clearly supposed to be Cobras, but they're definitely rubber hoses. Yeah. Uh, they tie them up, and they do mention that the Snizzard's whole thing is he wraps you up in snakes and they sap your power away. So it makes sense why this works. Uh, yeah. Then we cut back to the actual A plot of the story, which is we're getting close to the landing of the plane. They are now at the airport, and Amy and uh, Kimberly is slowly landing the plane. And while she's landing the plane, the air tower is just like, uh, 3024 Echo, can you tell us what the fuck is going on over? <laughs> You're not cleared to land. You're not cleared to land on that airstrip. Tell us what your emergency is, for fuck's sake. Uh, no, is are we being hijacked? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they also have radio to a uh, a fire truck uh, as their emergency and a, uh, a a police chopper. And they're like, we have no contact with the three zero two four echo. Uh, something's clearly wrong. Uh, but Kimberly, good for her, lands the friggin' plane like an absolute beast. Mm -hmm. And who wakes up as soon as the wheels hit the fucking ground? Uncle Steve just happens to wake up magically. <laughs> and uh, he finishes the landing by pulling the brakes, essentially. And the plane slows to a Scott stop. Everything's fine. Bulk and Skull stop having a, a mild panic attack in the back and fainting over and over again. Which, to be fair, was a lot of comedy for this episode. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, but then Kimberly just pops open the passenger door and's like, "Hey, uh, can you make sure they're okay? Uh, I I need to go somewhere." <laughs> Steve is like, "Kimberly, please wait up." And no, I got to, Kimberly you, just. I got. I don't I, know how I've to got explain something this. I need to do. <laughs> yeah, I've got something I need to do. I need to go now. Bye. And then she leaves, and uh, we just uh, all realize at this point that. Steve's pilot license is so fucking gone. Yeah, he yeah. has no explanation. Not, he runs off. Yeah, Steve is not able. Steve is not going to be able to fly anymore uh, because of the emergency landing and not talking to anyone. Uh, <laughs> and, and not talking, talking to anyone is life. exactly what Skull wanted, so he could add him to his next. Because <laughs> <laughs> he became so depressed that yeah, Skull right. ended his life for him. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> We're not done yet. I know, I know. So Kimberly comes back to the fight. We get a little morphing sequence with her. She comes back into the fight. She basically dominates the rest of this fight for everyone. She fires a arrow. She fires an arrow at the. Uh, I I I I I, I listen to it. Uh, the cobra calls his little apple charm that they shoot as a weak spot. His ultimate power, the Zapple Apple. The Zapper Apple, yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah, the God. Zapper, the Zapper Apple, which makes just makes me think of the Dapper Yapper, Justin Roberts. Good old <laughs> Justin Roberts. Uh, he's only forty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe he looks like he's twenty, but he's forty. Yeah. So good on him. Yeah. Uh, but yes, uh, he fires uh, uh 
um, a arrow at the zapper apple and uh yeah he just dies so this is actually i thought it was only two this is three episodes in a row without any sort of zord fight yep which is well, in- <laughs> well we do kind you you mean you main megazord fight fight yeah main megazord fight yeah because like the the individual zords we we did kind of get like a megazord sequence but then of course there was like the t-rex footage so it's like you're not the real that, that, was, that was no clowning around i'm talking about power ranger punks peace love and woe and this episode there is no zords oh oh yeah very true so three episodes in a in, three episodes in a row with no uh with with, with no zords uh then we get the wrap up they're back at the youth center and uh Unknown nineties pretty boy is talking to Kimberly about how she landed a plane. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> who are you? Where are you yeah. come from? It's like And I do so- gotta say with the Rita wrap up, sorry, real quick. Uh we do not get an eye of a headache and we get like I wanna say just like five seconds of like Rita beating the shit out of her underlings. <laughs> <laughs> I, I forgot to put that in my notes. But basically what happens is they cut back to Rita Rita for like three seconds. She hits squat i want to say and then is in the middle of hitting babu when they cut to black <laughs> too much so violence it's, i guess yeah I it's don't pretty know. yeah i don't know but yeah unknown 90s pretty boy there and i'm just like you're literally only here so so skull can kill you later yeah it's like he's with my woman <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh i also forgot to mention that at the airfield bulk and skull wake up again and uh they're both like so happy to be on the ground that they just run away in Mach Five. Yeah, <laughs> they and, and, also and, uh, are in an episode of Benny Hill. Sorry, say yeah, again? they also are in an episode of Benny Hill. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, uh, and uh, that is uh, that would be everything about this episode. So, da, 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 oh wait, sorry. Uh, yeah, and uh, Uncle Steve and Unknown Nighty's Pretty Boy are never heard from again. So Bulk's uh, body count, or sorry, Skull's body count is officially doubled. Dun, 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 dun. Oh my God, Skull! The, the oh road he's taking, taking some names. Yeah. Uh, then Season we- one, episode fifteen, uh, is of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers is Dark Warrior. Wait, sorry, Michael, um, uh, Adam, what were you thinking about to say? No, I was literally about to say Dark Warrior. Oh, Go okay. ahead. All right. Um, air date was September 28th, 93. And how dare you interrupt me, Andreas, for interrupting Adam. You are fired. <laughs> no, you're fired. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm the president of the United d- 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 WCW, uh, this podcast, and I demand for you to get out of this building. Okay, I'll take my recording software with me. Bye. Oh wait, I'm in BC. Shit. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, um, written so... by Ronnie Sperling, Jeff Deckham, D- Jeff Deckman, uh, Mark Hoffmeyer, and directed by Terrence H. Winkless. Winkless. Okay. Winkless, as opposed to Winkler. Winkler. <laughs> A winkless instead of wink more. Yeah. Oh my exactly. God. So Dark Dark Warrior, uh, also six days after the last episode, there must have been something that went on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Dark Warrior opens at, on another science lab. It's not a Brian Cranston character. It's Uncle Howard. Uncle Howard? <laughs> Which is the third, uh, third of Trini's many relatives. Uncle Howard is a scientist and a karate master. And he's currently working on his invisibility formula, which he tests on the probably the worst thing in this room to test it on, which is a cactus. Oh, yeah, it's a cactus out of all things. Why would you test it on something that can bring you harm? <laughs> like a self-destruct button or something like something. Yes. Uh, something harmless. Something safer. Something safer, like uh, make the make the nuclear codes invisible or something. That's nice. nice. Yeah, uh, <laughs> nice. Uh, I also no, to point no, out. wait, wait. The most evil thing to turn invisible of all. You lay it on the floor, and then you turn nothing but the Legos that are on the floor invisible. Oh, you oh, evil no. bastard! You. That's disgusting. You're such an evil man. Invisible uh, Legos. Oh my god. Yeah. That's scary. Uncle Howard, by the way, uh, I tried my best to find 
read anything related to this man. Uh, he is just a ghost. The person who played Uncle Howard, the, it, it, he's never been identified. Just really? no, yeah. I literally looked everywhere. There was no credit for him on IMDb. I, there, the only thing I could find that was even closely related to him was I went to Ranger Wiki and read his little thing. And in the trivia, it says that Uncle Howard was portrayed by an unidentified actor. <laughs> Oh, okay. So that explains so his. We literally ability. have no clue who the man who played Uncle Howard is, and I think he was just embarrassed. Yeah, he didn't want to put that on his resume. It's kind of like the guy who had to stand naked in at the end of Sleepaway Camp with the little girl's mask on. Oh yeah, that's a <laughs> dick. Yeah, that guy just didn't want to be known that's as the guy dick. who wore. He just didn't want to be known as the guy who stood naked in Sleepaway Camp with a little girl's face on his face. Yeah. Oh god, that movie. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, no, no, that um that uh, well, no, that, that there was more to that. I know, but I'm just saying damn that movie. Oh no, I'm not talking about the movie. I mean the mask. But anyway. Yeah. yeah. So we we cut to the youth center and uh Jason's hosting his karate class, Trini's following it. Uh Billy is just at the bar at the juice bar. Uh I I think Zach and Kimberly are not anywhere in the scene at the moment. No, uh, they're uh, not. Yeah. And Bulk and Skull are playing an arcade game. And I put in my notes, Bulk is a leather daddy because he's wearing a leather jacket and his iconic leather bomber hat. Yeah, it's a great iconic leather bomber hat. Like more than <laughs> uh, Sk Skull's also bison hat that he wears all the time is also iconic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Skull's little red beret yeah. with the question mark on it. Yeah, it's like okay, this is, is kind of like you know you just do whatever with your costumes, guys. I guess <laughs> very true. I, I think uh, the, his hat is like iconic and like I think a beret for Skull. Yeah, Skull's beret is a lot better than the this captain's hat. Uh, hmm. But uh, they're out of quarters. They they just used their last quarter. So Billy is throwing some recycling away, and he looks over and he's like, "Hey, geekhead." Can I borrow a quarter? Which means and give me they do money. The, yeah, and, and they do the uh, they do the generic '90s bullying thing where he tur they turn him upside down and they shake him for his change, uh, and then they throw him in a recycling bin. Poor and Billy. <laughs> poor Billy. Trini deals with Bulk and Skull with a double noggin with a double noggin knocker, uh, knocking their heads into each other, and then they just kind of like wander away. Uh, and they waddled away, waddle, waddle, waddle. waddle. <laughs> yeah, and they, uh, they... Trini pulls Trini pulls Billy out of the uh, recycling bin, and I just realized I, I put here, and I it makes more sense now. I just put here like Billy can't fight, but no, he really hasn't done any fighting outside of the morphing suit. Right, because in so... the morphing suit, when he's in the suit, the power takes over, so it does it for him. Because he does all of these. Suit yeah, makes moves. him competent. The, the suit, suit makes, makes him competent. competent. He, yeah. He just can't fight in his outs outside. Yeah. Uh, so he he resolves it. I'm gonna learn how to fight. I'm gonna re-enroll in Jason's karate class, and I'm gonna learn how to fight. And he's uh, sucking and, uh, just as much as he was the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Then we cut to then we cut to Rita's palace, and uh, she's de demanding Finster make her a monster. And he says that he's going to make a monster using uh, I the wisdom of a tiger, the spirit of the ages. Spirit and, of the uh, ages. And uh, the strength of ten something something, like some alien space toad, basically. Okay. Uh, and he creates the monster of the week, which is the Dark Warrior. He has a nice who scarf. Who is voiced by Tim Weiner. <laughs> Tim Weiner. Here we go. The legend continues. Ow. Welcome back, my friend. Amazing yeah. scarf. Yeah, the Dark Warrior with a great scarf, and he's kind of got like this whole ninja aesthetic going with him. I bring it up a bit later, but there is something like ninja y about him. Um, and the whole plan is that they're going to use the Dark Warrior to steal uh, Uncle Howard's invisibility formula. <laughs> and I'll, I'll talk about the, pow the, the plan a bit later when it comes more relevant. So we cut back to the youth center and we're in Jason's karate class. Jason's just finishing it up, but we get a shot at some of some of the students who are clearly like 
not teenagers. Full grown adults. They're definitely full grown men, and one of them is definitely well known judo uh, martial artist, uh, Willem Ruska. William fucking Ruska. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, okay, good to know that they, they at least have some sort of celebrity person in Jason's karate class. That'd be, yeah, very true. <laughs> Uh, we cut to Uncle Howard, who is now wandering like an old man through the uh, youth center. I put in my notes here that Howard looks really white, but, you know, after watching it a few times, he's definitely Asian. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why I thought it was like a whitewashing thing. I, I nearly know. pissed my soul. Well, I thought it was funny. It's like, Billy was adopted. Yeah, was it because he was wearing a blue coat in the beginning? <laughs> It, it was because of the lighting in the first scene that made it lo him look white. Oh, okay. All right. Makes sense. Yeah, but in, in this scene, he looks a lot better. And also, he's he's color-coded to match Trini's, so it makes more sense. Yeah. Uh -huh. I love yeah. how relatives are color-coded to, yeah. to their family uh, members. Tr Trini meets up with Uncle Howard and introduces Billy to Uncle Howard, asking... He's asking for karate tips, and Uncle Howard is like, "Yes, Billy son, I will teach you how to do karate." And uh, we get we get the Karate Kid. <laughs> we definitely we get cut the back to kid. Rita. We cut back to Rita's palace, and Rita is just randomly beating her two uh, least in least power least good henchmen, Squat and Babu. And uh, I put in my notes, Rita's just an abusive mom. <laughs> yeah, she is. She so is. <laughs> yeah. So that's uh, that's definitely uh, that's definitely something there. Uh, the plan is that they're all gonna go go down to Uncle Howard's lab to try and find this invisibility formula. Oh yeah, no, Rita's an abusive mom because they go down to the lab, they can't find the invisibility formula, and Squat just drinks a couple of like unlabeled science bottles. Yeah, and then we cut back, and Rita's like. How many times have I told you to not drink something that doesn't have a label? Don't put it in your mouth. Smack, smack, smack. God, it's almost <laughs> like a shot for shot reimagining of my childhood. Wow, that got dark. <laughs> well, okay, okay. So, so, so I drink one accidental Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde like formula, and now you get the man you see today. Very true. We How the... many times have I showed you that Canadian fucking? PSA, don't you put Ooh. it in your <laughs> Don't you put it? <laughs> oh, God, I love that commercial. I swear to God, if you're not careful, I'm going to do to you to what another PSA did to a chef who just wanted to get married. Uh, you need to show me this later. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, you'll do after the, after the episode. Yeah. Uh, so we cut to uh, Billy and... Uh, Uncle Miyazaki, or sorry, Uncle, uh, what's his name from Karate Kid? <laughs> Uncle Howard. Yeah, Uncle, no. oh, Uncle, okay, Uncle Miyagi. No, okay, yeah, Uncle Miyagi, that's what it is, I'm sorry. Yeah, Wait, did you say that. Uncle Miyazaki? Yes. <laughs> rest in peace, Hayao Miyazaki. Yes, rest okay. in peace. Rest in peace anime. So we cut to Uncle, Uncle, Uncle Miyagi, Uncle Howard, and he's teaching Billy some karate, which really just looks like Tai Chi, honestly. It shows but one more. It works. It works uh the putties show up and billy is too scared to fight so they just all like gang up on this old man and they cut away Obvious to a far, a far shot of the back a far shot of the back of howard's head and it's just the most obvious stunt double in the history of stunt doubles sorry go ahead he's got different colored hair he looks like he's got different colored skin from this far away uh, he just doesn't look right, and then <laughs> you were gonna say something. What do you think is a worse? Uh, what do you think is a worse stunt double? This Uncle Howard doing this, or Mortal Kombat Annihilation Raiden, where you, they don't even try to hide it? I've actually had some time to think about this, and I think the real answer is Disaster Movie. What yeah, about that's this? true. Disaster, oh, the disaster movie. movie has the worst stunt what? double. It's a but comedy. Like the princess character is breakdancing, and they don't even try and hide it. And it's it, it's just like this black guy who's just dancing. Malcolm, it's an uh, it's a comedy. Of course, they're not trying to hide it. Why are you it questioning? Good. Why are you it's questioning this? It's because it sucks. 
stats walk. I agree. It's disaster it's movie. Still, though, it's Things still, that though. suck need to be shat on. <laughs> I, okay. I agree, but I agree. It's still the worst stunt double. He gave you an answer, and you just shat on it. <laughs> it's not very... Yeah, okay. All right, all right. Uh, Jesus anyway, Christ. to get back to get back to the episode, they take uh, Uncle Howard away, each of them <laughs> holding like a limb. I'm going to let him laugh and just... Just keep going through this episode. Okay, I'm, we cut to a cave. I'm muting myself. I'm muting myself. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. We cut to a cave, and uh, yeah, so we cut to a cave. I'm sorry, I just fucking derailed this whole. <laughs> My <process>. leg hurts. <laughs> I slapped it so hard. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna get. I'm gonna try and get back on track. We cut to. We, we hold on. To I gotta get my cane. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> we cut to a cave. And in the cave is just, like, a bunch of dynamite. Like, it looks like 27 tons of dynamite. I'm exaggerating. Uh, <laughs> and how and Dark Warrior is like, where is your invisibility formula? And he, Uncle Howard is just like, I don't know. I don't remember where I put it. And he's like, and Dark Warrior is just like, you have one hour to tell us, or I'm blowing you up <laughs> with 12, 27 tons of dynamite. <laughs> So he just sets the timer on this giant cave full of dynamite, and yeah, their plan is to blow up an old man. Yeah, if he doesn't uh, remember in like an hour, you're dead. Yeah, yeah. So poor Uncle Howard with his Alzheimer's. We cut back to the youth center, and Billy runs back, and uh, Trini says, "Well, there's our soon-to-be yellow belt." <laughs> Billy, Billy talks about Uncle Howard being kidnapped, and then. Ernie brings over some black balloons saying, Trini, this this note and some these balloons just arrived for you. And the balloons pop. They're filled with glitter. And she pulls out a ransom note that's like, if you don't come with the invisibility formula in one hour, your uncle will die. And I'm like, this is the most weird ransom delivery service I have ever seen. I'm just picturing Dark Warrior going into some delivery service saying, like, I want to get these black balloons and write a note. How much? And fill them with glitter. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Gotham City is a thing. Maybe he hired the Joker to deliver the ransom. Very true. <laughs> well, no. If he hired the Joker, it'd be filled with laughing gas and everyone would die. <laughs> yeah, also that. <laughs> or a straight jacket. Or a straight jacket. Or, or a dead or no, I'm thinking of a, of a jack in the box with a straight jacket. Yeah. Or a dead picture of a donkey and a threat. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, All you gotta uh, yeah. do is threaten the IRS on him, and I'll leave you alone. Oh, he's afraid exactly. of the IRS. Even, yeah. e even a Joker doesn't mess with the IRS. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but they they all uh, go to the cave, and <laughs> the Dark Warrior. None of the putties. No Dark Warrior. No one's really there. They just get into the cave with no issues, and Uncle Howard's <laughs> there. And they're like, oh, God, Billy, can you disable this bomb? It's got, like, 45 seconds left on it. And Billy's like, I can try. And then Uncle Howard gives him the worst advice. Use your karate to disable the bomb. Use the karate, Billy. It's your only hope. But, uh, so I'm going to get back into, yeah, so the the cave. Uh, yeah, so Billy oh, defuses the bomb sorry. with. Uh, can I just say, before they get into the cave, they have a putty fight outside. And one of the greatest. Oh, there was Billy a putty fight. And then we have one of the greatest Billy moments ever because he finally defends himself while the other Rangers are fighting. He's learning how to, he fought against the putty, and oh, even yeah. he was surprised. Oh, yeah, I completely missed that. I'm so sorry. Billy finally coming into his own and learning how to fight outside of the suit. Yes. This is the crux of the episode, and honestly, this is a big moment for Billy. Yeah, it took 15 episodes, but we finally got Billy to defend himself, finally. Yeah, for sure. Finally, so yes, bi uh, back in the cave, Billy def Billy defuses the, the bomb with karate, <laughs> and with four seconds to spare as well. So they untie Uncle Howard, and Uncle Howard just wanders off camera, and instead of like waiting for him to like fully leave, they just as soon as he's off camera, they just morph. <laughs> he just steps like five. So it's it's like steps. it's like one of three things. It's either uh, he walks off screen, 
and he's immediately like back at the at this juice bar or it's like commodore 64 rules where as soon as he walks off screen he doesn't exist anymore yeah, very true yeah <laughs> or what i think personally happens uh they all look at each other and they're like uh he has alzheimer's he's not gonna remember anyway <laughs> yeah we'll just send him to the home after Right, Trini? Yeah, and then maybe Skull will think, hey, you know, this person wanders off quite a bit. What if we, you know, maybe while he's wandering, maybe see he wanders no more. <laughs> wanders no yeah. more. It doesn't even matter. So we, we get a bit of fighting with Dark Warrior. Dark Warrior's honestly dominating this fight early on, and instead of Rita like taking her win and being like, okay, great, they're actually beating the Dark Warrior and they don't know how to defeat him yet, no, nah, she just makes the Dark Warrior grow and just completely fucks the fight in her out of her favor. Mm, thanks, yeah. Rita. Yeah, Rita, what's yeah, up with that? Thanks, Rita. Uh, but I do need to mention that uh, when the Dark Warrior gets huge, he's using this weapon, and it's really fucking cool. Uh, it's I looked it up. Uh, one second, I can pull that Isn't up. Isn't it a mace? It, it's no, it's 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 called a kusari gama. Okay. And it's it's a ninja weapon. It is literally like because ninjas used to be like farmers right. of feudal Japan. So it's literally just their farming sickle with like a chain and like a little hacky sack on the end of it. And oh. they use that to like, they use the hacky sack end to distract their opponent to go in with a good clear shot with the, uh, with the, with the farming sickle. Oh, that's a good technique. Yeah. All right. It's a really cool weapon and I, it doesn't really get mentioned a lot. So I just had to bring that up. Mm. Right. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, then obviously it gets big we get the first zord fight in three episodes mm -hmm. uh and we get the mega zord obviously and i in my notes i said that the zord looks really bright uh it does look a bit out higher like higher saturation uh higher contrast mm -hmm. but i think it's just like a double one the lighting was a bit brighter when they filmed this for the sentai and also the Dark Warrior is so black that the uh, the Zord just looks brighter by comparison. Yeah, very, very true. It's like a placebo effect. Yeah, I agree uh, with that. But it, yeah, but it's just a normal-ass sword fight. They get the power sword, they defeat him, and everything's fine. And then we get the wrap-up. We cut back to the youth center, and Billy has just earned his piss belt. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Billy has earned the piss belt in the light of God, and Willem Ruska is there. Everyone's happy. Willem Ruska is proud. Everyone's, so is Uncle everyone Miyagi. is proud of Billy. Everyone, everyone's clapping. Uh, Uncle Howard is at the juice bar, and he's just like finishing a drink. He puts the drink down, and uh, we cut back to the karate class, and Bulk and Skull show up in what is definitely not regulation gi, mm -hmm. because uh, Bulk has a bunch of denim on the outside of his gi and his like leather gloves and then skull is i believe also just wearing some of his bully clothes on the outside of his gi and it's like that's not regulation <laughs> uh but un uncle howard uh sees that this is happening and luckily ernie who earlier took away uh uncle howard's invisibility potion while he set it down at the juice bar which means ernie is the reason that this episode happened basically yeah he took away the ju he took away the jar yeah and brought ernie it back. is the reason that that ernie almost blew up uncle howard yes exactly basically uh but then he gets his invisibility formula back and he sees that uh, the bullies are like hounding Billy. So he drinks a bit of his invisibility formula, goes invisible, sneaks up on them and does some invisible fighting, which is just like, wow, great. Uh, now, if you put two invisible men through a table, now we can call it a good match. Invisible Stan versus invisible man. Book it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's just a pretty standard fight scene. Uh, and then Uncle Howard becomes visible again. And this is where I mentioned the plot hole about Rita's plan for this episode. Mm -hmm. Rita's plan for this episode is the Dark Warrior is supposed to go and take the invisibility formula so that she can use it to make the Power Rangers disappear so she never has to worry about them again. Yeah. Yet 
we have just seen that them becoming invisible does not negate the ability for them to fight, so they can obviously still fight. And also, they just turn visible again after a while. It's like, Rita, you're a fucking moron. Uh, yeah, she doesn't think through these things sometimes. Yeah. Uh, before we do the, uh, the the obvious final bit of the episode, did we get a headache in this episode, Malcolm? Um, I want to say, yeah, I want to say we're at either seven or eight. Okay. Well, you said seven earlier, so we're at eight. Uh, hey, and of course, the episode ends. Uh, Uncle Howard shakes Billy's hand, and uh, yeah, uh, we never see Uncle Howard or Willem Ruska again. So, dun, dun, uh, two dun, more dun, for two, two more for Skull's body count. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so. We uh, we're, we're finished the episode, so uh, very the last, last episode of this batch. Last episode of this batch, which is switching anyone... places, episode sixteen. So and this aired. Oh. It aired October fourth, ninety three. Hmm. All right. So, so that's like yeah, another week, another like few days away. Yeah. Uh, it was written by two people. Shuki Levy and uh, Steve Kramer, Kramer, and directed by Jeff Reiner. Right. Did, directed by who? Sorry, uh, Jeff Reiner. Okay. Jeff who, Reiner. Uh, other, only other Rob episode Reiner. she did was Different Drum. Different Drum. Oh, okay. so the the Deaf Girl episode with the net, <laughs> foiled by a net. So... Foiled by my one enemy, rope. So this is one of my favorite I, episodes I in this entire season. One of them, because it's basically a Freaky Friday situation. So we start with like Squatch uh, sneaking into Billy's garage to uh, tinker with Billy's latest machine, and he just ups and leaves, and Rita's proud of him for doing that. And Squat sounds like Master Roshi when he's doing this. Yes, yes, he does. Especially when he laughs, because he laughs, he goes, eh. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, we cut back to uh, Daylight, where Billy is in his garage with Kim, tell talking, telling her about his latest invention, which will, like, able to read minds, because Billy is smart as hell like that. And... Bulk and Skull are outside with the rad bug, just peeping on them, trying to figure out what they can do. Like, hey, we want to get in on this machine so we can read minds. And uh, so, yeah, Kim says more phenomenal, for, which is the second time she says it, I think. She said it a couple times in the last few episodes. Oh, like, yeah. not this batch. Not this batch, but, like, of the past 16. Okay, all right. I'm just mm -hmm. remembering things wrong. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. All right. So Billy puts himself and Kim inside the machine, and he holds hand, and I, I see what you're doing, Billy. Smooth Billy. Well, not a Billy is a man whore moment, because she doesn't, he doesn't add a uh, Kimberly to her uh, to his body count. Very true. I'm just saying he's smooth as hell. So yeah, And also Bul Bulk and Skull are there. Yeah, outside just waiting. <laughs> and so, yeah, they uh, see this, Skull sees this dog who's like just Happy to see them. Just Mrs. standing there. Just standing Menacingly. there. Menacingly. Menacingly. And he, the Balkan Skull just run off. And then um, Billy turns on the machine. And this is a fun fact here. Well, not really a fun fact. But during this scene, David Yost and Amy Jo Johnson almost died from this. Because the thing caught on fire. Oh, yeah. yeah they almost died. Yeah. <laughs> There was many of the many reasons uh, what Saban did and uh, many different ways the Rangers almost died. And A.B. Joe Johnson talks about this a lot, saying, oh, this is why I didn't want to do certain stunts, because I almost died in this, and so did David Yost. Yeah, that's what happens. Saban doesn't care about his actors, non-union actors, because they're not unionized. Yes, yeah, thanks, Saban. Yes. Thanks, Saban. So, since Squat... Tinkered with the machine instead of reading minds, it switched places their personality. I mean, their bodies, whatever. Kim becomes Billy, right. Billy becomes Kim. Yeah, and they both scream into the camera, which is hilarious. Yeah, Balkan Skull come in, 
They st don't know that uh, they switch bodies, so they think they can read minds. They strap themselves in. There's a little music t jingle when they hold hands for some reason. They, they show that Bulk and Skull are the true OTP, and also Bulk fitting in the little cardboard cutout is hilarious. Yep. Uh, we also did miss something. I'm sorry before you continue, Andreas. Mm -hmm. uh, we got a shot at Rita's palace where Rita is talking to Goldar, and this is the moment. Ooh. This is the episode where Goldar's voice achieves perfection. Goldar status achieved. Yes. This is and when it get... finally actually... <clears throat> Do it. Do the line. Say the this line word. This starts to be like the real ender of the Bottle Rangers. I don't know how you do that, but that's insane. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> he has a hard nicotine problem. Are you Goldar. doing that for the bit, or are you actually coughing? I'm Goldar. <laughs> I'm Goldar. I'm Goldar. I'm here to destroy the Bell Rangers. Okay, let's move on, guys. Why did he turn into Nerdmeister? Oh, oh, I like him. Okay, so Bulk and Skull go for the machine. Bulk becomes Skull. Skull becomes Bulk. And it's just amazing because Skull, as Bulk takes his hat, you know what I mean, and Bulk as Skull does the laugh, and they both scream into the camera. Yep. We're going, and then we cut back to Angel Grove High where Kim, Billy, Billy, Kim is at her, his, her, her locker. And trying to put on makeup, and these mean girls are making fun of her. Wait, no, not yet. And one of them is, and sorry, yeah, not yet. Not yet, sorry. Uh, yeah, she's trying to make up and failing miserably, and then we cut to Billy's place where he's teaching a boy on a computer. And I swear to God, this boy may be Jason's cousin in a later ser in a later episode, because he looks so familiar. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say it's Willie, but clearly Skull killed him. Yeah, very true. <laughs> Victim number one. Uh, yeah, but uh, but you d you did forget to mention that when uh, Kimberly is K Billy in Kimberly's body is trying to put on makeup. Oh yeah. Uh, they cut to the three. They cut to the three girls, and one of them is definitely a man. Yeah, yeah. I was about to say that. Like I missed that part. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, one of them definitely looks like a man. Cause Jesus. Okay, I'm getting canceled, but who cares? <laughs> <laughs> so we I cut, think we're all getting cancelled yeah so we cut well, back no, to I, we cut back to Kimberly I, I, sorry go ahead I, I didn't say nothing I don't know what you guys are talking about guilty by I association started the Columbine discourse oh yeah wait uh right <laughs> so we cut back to Kim in the uh baking class and she's trying to make a souffle but she's screwed in the home ec class the home and ec that's class. not how I have to mention two things. One, uh, Kimberly, uh, Billy, Bill, Billy's brain in Kimberly's body. Billy, you are a like mega nerd, mm -hmm. uh, and you can't use a fucking hand mixer. Like Malcolm, I'm sorry, like you're an idiot sometimes, but even you know how to use a hand mixer. Explain. Yeah. Yes, you yeah, do. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> There's a story and also there. The other th and also the other thing I have to point out about this home ex scene is um, when they cut back and the souffle, souffle is finished and it just blows up like a balloon. Souffles don't work like that. Yeah. And we cut back to Billy as Kim teaching. As like the computer just blows up, just straight up blows up. <laughs> yep. Because Kimberly doesn't know how to how computers work. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't blame her. I don't blame her because she is like a valley girl shopper kind of gal. But anyway, we cut back to the hall of Angel Grove High. Billy and Kim are fighting, or arguing with each other, and like Billy is like very, uh, very, very girly in this episode because he's playing Kim. And I gotta say, yeah. David Yost in real life is actually gay, but he didn't know it at this time because he didn't figure it out until like later on. Uh, and I'm just saying, he's slaying the hell out of this queen. Slay it, David queen. Yost is, David Yost is an absolute queen, and I love him. Yes. Also, Taking on a we, definite more feminine role, he definitely seems like... I, I love his performance as Billy, but honestly, like, if if they were to, like, make a, like, storyline for the story where, say, 
Billy discovers like he is like if if Billy were to become the first openly gay Power Rangers in history, like again, this is back in the nineties because mm-hmm. we now have a first openly gay Power Ranger. Cosmic um, uh, Dino with, Fury, yeah. Yeah, Dino Fury and Cosmic Fury. But I think it would have worked. I genuinely think it would have worked. Well, like in the nineties. Like, again, the nineties. Yeah, the mm. gay the gay uh the gay and lesbian uh the gay group, community the gay community the, yeah the gay community was not really uh given they were not really loved that much back then so it was like a crossroads back then it's not accepted as yeah. it was now yeah for sure yeah. uh also you forgot to mention Vulcan uh Vulcan skull having a little eating section yeah. where skull bulk or bulk in skull's body is eating everything and skull in bulk's body is just sort of like breathing on the sandwich and he gets pissed off they also <laughs> say one of my favorite catchphrases that I don't know if it ever comes back but I really hope it does they both say it's scarfing time I don't remember if they do but it's been a while <laughs> but yeah that's a good line yeah. it's scarfing time Garfin anyway, back time. to David Yost being a queen. Yeah, he rolls his eyes, and I'm going like, damn, he's really slaying it. I love David Yost. He's killing it in this episode. For sure. Yeah, I'm cut back to Rita's palace, and he just, she decides to go like, hey, we need a monster, and we must get, dun, 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 the genie. Huh? The genie. Just, just the genie. The just the genie. genie. Yes. So Squad and Babu go down to the park. They release they release a genie. Uh, Zordon is aware of this. Calls the Rangers. Like there's a there's a lamp in the park. They go to the park. Zach runs up to the lamp and he goes like, "Look, guys, I got the lamp. I got the lamp." He's all excited for some reason. This is weird. <laughs> oh my god and then, they cut back and then they go to command center and he, he puts it down and he's like so what is this thing zordon it's a lamp <laughs> it's a damn lamp zach <laughs> you said it earlier but here's the part where i really love because kimberly as billy this is how you show it's like amy Rowe johnson is truly getting her acting chops down because she has Billy's mannerisms down pat because she has her hands in her pocket. And David Yost is doing the Kimberly thing, like standing like Kimberly, which is absolutely great. Yeah. I just David love got the great touch. body language down, which is impressive. Yes, mm-hmm. he does. They also, they, all, they also, I forgot to point this out when I was talking about the bulk and skull scene earlier. They also swapped clothes. Oh, right. So. Skull is wearing Bulk's clothes, and they're just, like, swimming on him. They're so big. And Bulk is wearing Skull's clothes, and I feel like if Bulk were to, like, fart, uh, his clothes would be ripped. Oh, my God. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. So then it's morphing time. The Rangers morph, and Billy as Kim is the pink ra- Wait, what? No, Kim as Billy is pink. Billy as Kim is blue. Kim as Billy is blue. Yeah. Billy as Kim is pink. Yeah, they switch bodies and they're, they're yeah. It's a little bit confusing, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you. This episode they go they uh, teleport back and forth, back and forth. There's a like three teleports in a span of two minutes. Yeah, because just... like they teleport from command center to a putty fight, then they teleport fr- from the putty fight to the genie fight. And then they teleport from the genie fight back to HQ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rita makes the genie grow. He's big now. And uh, mm-hmm. the Rangers call the Zords, which they come to the rescue. They make the Megazord. They fight. Yep. And yeah, and so- uh, the, the, the genie is winning a lot. And uh, this is something I have to point out because it's pretty huge in the connotations. Mm-hmm. Uh Alpha realizes that the Alpha and Zordon learn that the pow- the source of the genie's power is not Rita's magic, it's actually the lamp. Yeah. So they have to destroy the lamp. But Zordon warns Alpha and he's she's like Alpha, you need to be very careful. You need to fill the uh, you need to channel the energy of the lamp very slowly because if you don't, you will destroy the grid and everything in it, including the Power Rangers. End of series. Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> oh, yeah. We got one more. So, yeah. So, this is kind of the weakest Zord monster fight ever, because 
the genie just straight up disappears because if Alpha just destroys the lamp somehow, or it just they disappears. All... This is all... the first time, I believe, I looked up the statistic. This is the first time that the monster was not defeated by any of the main five. Okay, makes sense. It's alpha, just alpha. This one. Mm -hmm. Alpha finally ha has drawn first blood. <laughs> first blood, Alpha, you got bloodlust. All right, so they cut the monsters defeated. They cut back to the uh, garage. Billy and Kim are going back into the machine. Uh, Kim, Billy ask, "Is this gonna work?" And Billy, Kim give some elaborate explanation. And David Yost just rolls his eyes, and I love it. Slay Queen, slay for sure. Yeah, uh, and then they turn it on. They go back to their normal bodies. They're all happy. Bulk and Skull come in, begging to be taken back. Trini goes like, I don't know, man. Should we do it? Because you touch other people's stuff. Should we let him? I thought you were going to say something else when you said <laughs> you touch. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> So, yeah, Billy goes like, yeah, why not? Let's put them back together. And they go back in the machine. Billy turns it on. Bulk and Skull are back together. And Skull puts David puts Billy aside by saying like, hey, can I borrow your brain for next week? I got a test going on. I could use your brain. Bla brain? Brain? <laughs> I could use your brain. We've been playing. Yeah. <laughs> Billy goes like, no, not at all. And it ends like that, and I guess Skull just Okay, fails. well, Skull, um, I mean, okay, well, Billy, then I guess I'll see you before the next episode airs. Or he now you see, fails. In, now, you see, now you see in between episodes, Skull just harvests Billy Billy's brain and keeps it in a jar next to him for luck during math class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or he fails a class. And then Rita and... got a hold of it, and that led to an unaired episode, and that was the conclusion to the Skull is a Serial Killer for Now storyline. <laughs> or because Skull <laughs> fails... Zordon gives uh, Skull amnesia yeah. until yeah. he remembers, my God, I or, hate them. Or, the, or he this just men in black skull. The neuralizer, yeah, that too. Or what yeah. my theory is, my head cannon is bulk. I mean, skull fails the test, gets kicked out of school, becomes depressed. Ending. <laughs> ding 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 ding. ding. <laughs> Just sad, depressing ending for skull, and that's it. And then he become, and then he becomes the Unabomber. <laughs> oh yeah, he does. He does. So, so final thoughts. Final thoughts. Yeah, final final thoughts. Uh, who wants to start? Um, I, I will. Um, I, yeah. I gotta say, this is like a, a very filler group of episodes, but it is definitely one of the most fun. Mm -hmm. I prefer the the first three episodes myself, or, or no, the first two, then the last one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Those are probably my three favorite episodes of this uh, collection. It definitely was really nice to um, delve more, like delve deeper into the production of these episodes and learn more about the show itself and how it has branches all throughout, I want to say, the live action Fox Kids action lineup. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, mainly because I, I okay. really, I really, really want to do a podcast episode on the Knights of... No! No, 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 no. no. The Knights of Zochitan or whatever it is. Well, uh, you, can, uh, you, you can have fun with that one by yourself. Yes, sir. <laughs> so I'm going to be doing a solo podcast spinoff just uh, for all the audience viewers to know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, so I'll go next. Uh, my thoughts are that these six episodes are the strongest I have watched so far. Uh, coming, being the new, uh, the newbie to the, uh, to the whole Power Rangers thing. Uh, episode eleven was very a lot of fun, a lot of cool, interesting fight scenes. Uh, in the carnival, uh, pineapple was creepy as fuck. Mm -hmm. The whole flat Stanley thing made me very laugh very, very, very hard for the first like five minutes. Uh, <laughs> There was a lot in this episode that made me laugh, which is actually surprising considering I usually am not a huge fan of clowns. I'm not afraid of them by any means. I mean, I love Pennywise, but yeah. besides that, 
Uh, it was uh, it was a really good episode. Definitely really strong. Power Ranger Punks had a really great concept, and it did take advantage of it. It's definitely one of the better actual act like seriously better episodes of this batch. Uh, it's not my personal favorite of the of the episodes, but it is pretty good. Uh, Peace, Love, and Woe, I will say it, is probably, my, in my opinion, the weakest episode of the six, uh, out of the six we watched for this block. Uh, it's still really good, so it's not like a dock on it or anything, because Marge is hilarious, all of her facials. She only has oh, one facial oh. expression. Oh, Marge, I thought you meant Madame Woe, never mind, never mind. No, Mar Marge's facials are great, uh, right up there with Miss Appleby, uh, the, the baby geniuses thing like sent me on a in a fugue state and i don't want to fucking think about it anymore <laughs> Six, uh, five movies in a tv show uh, yeah how the fuck five movies in a tv show uh the uh the power coin combination thing was a bit weird it was definitely kind of man it makes sense why it only shows up once because no one wants to see a one-on-one -on -one fight. They want to see five like, sp spandex-clad teenagers fight everyone. Or as Dr. K would uh, say, it's not spandex. <laughs> that <laughs> is not spandex. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I do love it for the for the Billy's a man whore moment and uh, the fun bulk and skull bits in the episode. Uh, it's It's the least good. It gets the wooden spoon award for me. <laughs> least good. At least good. Uh, Foul Play in the Sky is probably my favorite episode of the six to talk about. Uh, it has a lot going for it. It's got the dumb airplane, the, the, the dumb land the plane Kimberly uh, plot point, which is hilarious. It just is like you're watching like a bad movie. Like you're watching that airplane movie with skin. What's his name? Was he no, no, the, the, the airplane, you know, the one where it's like, a, it's like, uh, a tied up airplane on the movie poster and it's uh Leslie Nielsen. It's the Leslie Nielsen movie called yeah, airplane airplane. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and oh. he just peeks in the cockpit and he's like, I just want to say I'm, we're counting on you all. Good luck. Oh, he does oh, yeah, it twice. I just want to tell you all good luck. We're all counting on you. Yeah. Uh, it's a very fun episode to talk about and the fighting isn't really much, but it is a very fun episode to at least kind of shit on a little bit, but it's fun. Mm. Uh, Dark Warrior is what I think is the best episode of these six. Um, it's got a lot going for it. It's got dark, it's got Uncle Howard and all of his weird, mysterious glory. It's got the terrible stunt, stunt double. It's got uh, Willem Ruska. It's <laughs> got the Dark Warrior is a really good monster design that we didn't talk about too much, but it's got a lot of good stuff going for it. Uh, I didn't know what they were going with that with that one because, as I've been saying, with um, a lot of the Japanese original monsters, is that they are going for more of a um, mystical, mythological dynamic for them, except for the chicken. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's just supposed to be a ninja, and ninjas are kind of mystical. So, oh, like like. Uh people of myth like shinobi and whatnot mm -hmm. yeah like mystical ninjas yes uh but it, it i love that the character development on billy you know billy coming into his own being able to fight outside the morpher uh it's all a very good episode and honestly i think it's the most well-written episode even though it's mostly just filler except for that one plot point uh it's, and, it's just a lot of fun and I, I had to say there was a little uh, tidbit of information I found out is that the Dark Warrior, later he went on to have a set of twins who didn't follow in his footsteps of evil completely, but they did decide to become pranksters for a Canadian television show. Which one? <laughs> the Prank Patrol. Uh, yes! Prank. All right. Uh, very good. And uh, episode 16, Switching Places, was also very good. Had a lot of fun moments. Had a lot of dumb, wacky, you know, hijinks with uh, the switch to Billy and Kimberly and Bulk and Skull. Uh, definitely wasn't great in terms of action, but it had a lot of really fun acting. And like I said, David Yost, you're a queen and I love you. Yeah. Uh, but overall, yeah, these six episodes, very strong, absolutely should go watch them, even if you're not a Power Rangers fan. Like, it's just a lot of fun 90s cheese for you mm -hmm. to, like, get buried in. Yeah. 
So um, next time. So mine is like for no Shit. clowning around. It's like I have a creepy. It's like clowns just creep me out. Like I can watch <laughs> clowns on the show, but if I see an actual clown in real life, I oh fuck out of here. <laughs> it's like it's just creepy uh, to no end. Dad and dolls. But, I'm out of Moron um, McDonald when I was three, and I never looked back. Yeah. Oh, what, what's that, Andreas? You hate dolls? Do you want to just put up a picture of Mr. Chickle Sneezer right now? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, screw you. But yeah, great. Uh, like, I like this episode, like, as uh, Pennywise. No, not Penny. What? Pickle Sneezer? Pineapple. Pineapple. Pineapple, he was a great clown. Creepy as hell. But then the monster itself, not so much. Power Ranger Punks. Great episode to see uh, Amy Jo Johnson's acting ability and David Yost trying. Like I said, I love you, David Yost, but damn. But you guys did a great job. Uh, peace, love, and woe. I love that Billy gets some more uh, action, if you know what I mean. Madam Woe yeah. is a great character. She did great. Because I love her design. Foul Play in the Sky. Uh, the... He's snizzard, snizzard, yeah, guy. He's an iconic character, yeah. villain, but got more iconic because now he's a cult classic. Because because of Brian Cranston, even though he wasn't mega famous during that time, but not everybody. Very disappointed they didn't bring him back for once and always. I don't think they could afford him for once and always. They could have brought him back. They brought him back as Zordon for God's That's sake. That's a different thing. Still counts. Yeah, very true. Still counts. Still uh, counts. Still counts, yeah. Uh, dark foul play in the sky. Like I said, another moment where Amy Jo Johnson's acting ability got so good because you can see that she's becoming a major star. Dark Warrior. Uh, Goldar's voice is perfection. I, I Finally. like it. Finally, Uncle we Howard. Get there. Uh, what? <laughs> That's weird. Yeah. But I, I, I'm pretty proud of Billy finally defending himself. It took 15 episodes. Switching Places, one of my favorite episodes in one of my favorite episodes because it's a brain switching, it's a body switching episode, and I love it. And we get to see more Queen David slaying the hell out of it. He killed it. He legit he absolutely killed it. killed it. Yeah. And like I said, Amy Jo Johnson showing more acting ability by getting down Billy Cranston's mannerisms down. But that's those episodes until next time we're gonna get serious with the green with evil story arc five part serial the it's five, gonna the, be the, beautiful yeah, yeah the, basically it's it's basically the first power rangers movie and honestly mm -hmm. i am kind of excited to see what they do with it and i like i i don't know anything like i know jason david frank as like i've met him before yeah. and he's a pretty cool dude but i don't know anything about the green ranger i don't know anything about tommy right uh i'm excited i am very excited oh yeah definitely like we're gonna it's like we're getting the introduction of jason david frank guys with a possible special guest for next week's episode for any of those who may watch the Andre and Mel pod. Yeah. Mel Ball. Mel podcast. Ball. Andre yeah, and Mel the Ball. Andre and Mel Ball podcast. Yeah. Yeah. The Andre and Mel, Mel Ball wrestling review. We may just have someone from there on here. It taps the nose. That's tap, tap, <laughs> tap, 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 tap it in. But anyway. So uh, if I may, Andreas, for the outro this time. Yep. I would like to bid all of you adieu, and may the power protect you all. This has may been the, the Doif. Power protect you. This has been the Doif, Dead Shrove, and the other guy. Humanoid, you yeah. fuck. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. God damn it! I'm the one recording you, fuck. And may the power uh, protect yeah. you all. May, may the power protect you. What he said. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs>